Oh, I wasn't expecting company tonight. Good evening. All right. I can't do the whole thing like this. <laughs> Things are tiny. How's it going, it chat was a gang? Solid effort. <laughs> I tried. I gave it the good old college try. How's it going, chat gang? I am the uh, marquee tonight. Uh, <laughs> Mephisto uh, here with a decant cast three, three drunk, three furious. <laughs> and three, the third episode. Joined by by a spirits professional with over a decades. Uh, uh, worth of experience. Uh, we're going to be going on a on a bit of a a festive, a Sam a, a trick or treat, a Halloween journey for your taste buds. So what are, what are we what are we doing tonight, SJ? What do we what do we got going on? Oh, we're probably going to drink some stuff and uh, choke down some Fireball close to the end of this. Oof! And then a good time will be had by all. <laughs> so I, I found the the. Uh, you you picked yeah you threw fireball and screwball on there, yes. Uh, and the excuse you kept giving me is we got to have some candy. Exactly. Like we didn't quite have a format ready for uh, you know a, a proper okay. Here's our next step in the wine journey we're all going on. So let's just do some Halloween party stuff and get some ideas for you know maybe people's kind of first party in two years. Who knows? <laughs> I love that. I love that. His hair is red because he's a worshiper of corn. <laughs> oh, is it? I have to prove my worship of corn real quick. Yeah. Oh. That's better. Oh, there it is. <laughs> the corn shades. Nice. Nice. Stunning corn. Yeah. And Scar Brand's here with us. So as you said, tonight's theme is really sort of like like sort of party party wine and, and a couple beverages besides. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, Party wines and some interesting things you may not ha normally try to pick up, like Oliver Wine Company's apple pie, which is an apple wine. That's that's a wine made from apples that tastes like, who to guess, apple pies. See, that's interesting because for me, apple pie is like just it's moonshine. Like it's a, it's a type yeah. of moonshine that you make in in a literal mason jar, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bummer you can find it because it tastes exactly like baked apple. It's wild. I, I got something else a little special we'll, we'll, when we get to that uh, that step. But uh, So tonight we're actually starting out with a uh, Casolero uh, del Diablo. <laughs> yes, the, mid, the Midwest pronunciation up there. This is Casiero del Diablo. Casolero. I could have went more. Lero. I could have chewed on the... Uh, Hero. Chewed on the, uh, the vowel sounds there a little more like I'm from the Midwest. Yeah, <laughs> Carmenier. So, so what is a, a car Carmenere? A Carmenere is a usually used as a blending grape in red blends, or okay. like a finishing in a in a Cabernet from South America. It gives it a lot more punch and dry on the end. Okay. And uh, like we learned from the last episode, I'm going to let you smell, you taste. Well, you tell me well, what we, you... we treat every every episode of Rantcast, and by extension, every episode of Decantcast, like it might be someone's first episode here. Stanley, rest in peace. So, uh, we discussed early on that when uh, when someone's teaching about wine or drinking wine, you tend to just start nodding and going, "Oh yeah, I smell that. Oh yeah, I, I taste mm -hmm. bananas mm -hmm. when I taste that." So, I'm trying not to lead the witness, and I'm going to let Mr. Meff here kind of tell me what he smells. CJ Ubusta, one of the other uh, oil barons showing up here, dropping a tier one sub for three years of support, even in CJ. Uh, and Hades uh, Death God, who's Australian by way of uh, Chile, or Chile, says Chile, uh, Chilean wine is best wine. So It's certainly, it, it. thank you Chile and Argentina and Peru for growing the world's produce. We appreciate it. So I get some, uh, I get some chocolate here. Like there's a there's a certainly a sweet on the nose. Mm hmm Got that chocolate, that sort of almost like a candy See, grape. Was... You know? Yeah, I get a little of that. I get a little bit of like leather couch. Hmm. Interesting. Let me <sighs> mm. Alright. So then we, we uh, so so we do our, our sort of uh, two sips, right? We do one sip mm -hmm. to get the pH. Set the palate. You know, you'll feel your cheeks pull and all of that. That's your body just getting ready. Because this one's kind of an acid bath. 
And the second which one is we why it's generally used as a mixer. This one it would not be considered a beginner red. I would say this one's a little more like oh I want to I want to push myself a little bit. So why why did you uh, put this one on the list? You said party wines. Why we got this here? Right. So this is this is one of those reds you can show off to your friends who maybe drink wine and go like oh I got a this and they go, oh look it's not just a barefoot sweet red moscato or something like that. This is kind of a show offy red. It's not crazy complex and it certainly has a little bit of the spaghetti red goodness in the mid range of it mm -hmm. like i don't really get an aftertaste i'm digging it sit on my tongue very long yeah like you get that acid mm -hmm. but it's not like the the pinot grigio acids you know where it's like oh no no that yeah, that not, like sour like apple acid you know citrus acid yeah so you do get the acid but it's like uh it's almost a pleasant like sort of just like a, a pleasant yeah. palate sort of tingle to it yeah, that, that acid you get from, like, plums or cherries. Right. This is an advanced red. There we go. Advanced red. So, have you you've gotten, you've started to get some 3.0 games in, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that you spent some time in the corn labs. Did we just do a stealth? Or am I about to put a stealth AOS topic inside the episode that is about mm -hmm. wine drinking? Did I just stealth? do that? I think it blew through the sidewall there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've I've uh, I've been enjoying. Everyone right now is realizing how great the cock meta is. I've I've been about the cock meta lifestyle for a while now. It's been treating me nicely. See, I I was a fan from the basic chaos stance of like just spamming uh, spamming some cock, but mm -hmm. um, unbelievable. Coco Addy, unbelievable. Thank you so much for the follow there. And first time in chat, first time in chat, gang. Travish, uh, one hundred to can't cast woo. Well. First time chat. Well, that's that's a new feature for Twitch. Well, you know, welcome to Chat Gang. <laughs> first time, ch long time viewer, first time chatter. Yeah, yeah. Not everyone watch. Not everyone in Chat Gang catches the live shows. You know, sometimes it's through the vods, and it's always nice when people ma manage to make it over from like YouTube or or, or wherever they're watching from. Yeah, it's definitely a good one to get live because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're just gonna be drinking and talking with chat. That's right. That's right. So I like this, mm. but I'm a, I'm a big Reds guy. Like I'm, if you showed this off at a party, I'd be like, "Ooh, what is that? That that yeah. Casalero del Diablo?" <laughs> yes, the 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 Lord well, this is what a podcaster looks like. Everyone else has been doing it wrong. No, this is podcasting. Yeah, new yeah. guest, who dis? This is a uh, this is this is SJ's had done done two shows now with me. Um, this is our third decant cast here. I could try yeah. to do it like this, but it's not going to work. I start to sound a little bit like Sean Connery when I put it. It's definitely TV Sean vibes isn't that, happening. Isn't that pretty? With the long S's. I didn't notice that the uh, that I I didn't think of the marquee as Scottish, but now I kind of do, like a Scottish vampire. There has to be Scottish vampires. Oh, Scot well, there's Irish vampires. Irish vampires are pretty great. I could not do the whole show with those in. It's weird how it like um, it because it it blocks my teeth off. It sends me to the sort of my uh enunciation to the back of my throat and then like and then the word the s's get chomped on as they're trying to come out so that's where you get that that sean connery i've only had one actual broadcast course and i remember all of this crap plus all yeah. the choir and and drama training and stuff that i have had yeah it's like you're trying to talk out of a tube in your throat mm -hmm. yeah it's Ooh. interesting that corn dp is dragging a wagon for sure <laughs> oh man corn damon prince the the ass prince who just goes around kicking ass it's it's the it's the best two hundred points you can spend in a chaos army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, uh, I'm so sad that one one day it may be nerfed, but I'm happy that the STD book is like a year and a half from now, so it'll years away from being nerfed. <laughs> I don't think corn specifically, and even by extension, uh, 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 slaves to darkness, or really much in chaos, truly needs a nerfing. I, I they did yeah. a light touch with a. Uh, you know, with, with Zinch and Archeon, they made the right call with Archeon. I've already talked about this on, on Rantcast, but they made the right call with Archeon. They targeted the correct ability. They didn't come down too ham-fisted. I yep. like so-called Hero Hammer, or I'd even go as far as to call it God Hammer. I enjoy it. I like that my, like, my fatties and my monsters, like, all my cool oh, yeah. shit stays alive now. I don't mind that. To interact I, on the I, table. The Timmy, the Timmy part of me loves 3.0 because it's like, oh wait, what are people running in Nurgle? Glotkin, Giant Spitty Dude, Giant Spitty Dude, two Guos, and like minimal battle line. Awesome, love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna play that every day. How how fast can I build and paint a Nurgle army? Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, so this is a this a, a Casiero. Mm-hmm. Um, this one actually has a cool name for like where it gets the name, right? Yes, the it's the Cave of the Devil. So uh, they were having a lot of problems with people coming in and stealing product, or at least this is how the story goes. And in, uh, in Chile, so they started a rumor around town and put on some like uh, devilish iconography all over the the cellar and spooked it out and basically spooked the locals from going in and breaking into the the basement because that's where the devil resides. I like to think. I mean, that's fantastic. I also like to think that it's it's your Halloween decorations really can be used multiple times a year, especially if you live in like a particularly evangelical part of the part of the country or your country is. I mean, you can you can apply some some like some classical devilish iconography to really, you know, protect your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it, when, whenever you watch one of those like paranormal activity movies, like why don't they just try to party with the ghost? Like, why are they so worried about the ghost? Why don't you try to hang with the ghost? Maybe yeah. the ghost is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you are a spirits professional, after all. Yes. I am a, <laughs> I'm a, prof- I'm a person who gets paid to uh, sell spirits. So, delicious. Love it. It's one of my go-to reds. And this guy is going for six ninety nine right now, at, at my grocery store, at least. Yeah, like, that's not bad. Well, this away. This is the uh, like third or fourth uh, Cassiero I've had. Every one of them's been great. Yeah, it's just it's just Boston. one of those brands I'm going to start looking for, you know. Boston, Boston. <laughs> Lady Olinder just wants some friends. Yeah, oh, I think for I, I think for the next uh, I think for the next uh, Meftober marathon, I'm going to have a redeem for Boston uh, amount of oh, yeah. uh, RDP. I think that'll be. That'll be fun, or like a do it a hundred dollar dono uh, dance party. Where yeah. You just have to stop and start busting right well, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Floss <laughs> or something like that. Busting makes me feel good. For those of you who've been watching me play scary games, you know, you know what's up. Um, <laughs> Hades dropping a thousand RDP to remind everyone chat gang ain't nothing to mess with. Um, Lady Olinder just wants some friends. I agree. I agree. Speaking of, you've got that. Uh, you, you've got the. Uh, what is the not Vargeist? Um, uh, the Morn Ghoul. Morn Ghoul. That's it. Sitting out. The my, one my, monster. My uh, Etsy Morn Ghoul. Yeah. Which I significantly like better than the the Forge World one. So we both decided to go with our, our Magnum friend here. <laughs> so everybody, this is your standard Bordeaux bottle of wine, the Cassiero. This is a Magnum. It's the 1.5. It's worth two bottles of wine. If you want a fun little game to look up on Google, look up French names for wine bottles. You'll get things like Salamanzer and Nebuchadnezzar. That's cool radical. Shit like that. That's radical. There's some, some uh, Age they, of Sigmar uh, champion naming conventions there. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's how they age um, sparkling wine. You don't age it in barrels. You age it in bottles, and you just cut it down until it gets to a... 750 bob. Is that confirmed? Is Night Hunt getting Ghost Pirates? Is that confirmed? Or oh, just... absolutely not confirmed. Yeah, yeah. AOS is so starved for news right now. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I caught the uh, the. Uh, I mean, it wasn't even a bit. You can't call it a bit. Haywa was looking for the for like the AOS news. It was like a week or two ago, and it was just mm-hmm. all 40k stuff on the AOS page. Yeah. Not exaggerated. It was just he. It's just like. Or all all uh, 40k stuff on the AOS page. It was just absurd. Well, it, because obviously something has happened to these dragons that has fucked GW's world right up. So here's here's the thing that it, like a lot of people have like conspiratorial takes on things and yeah. fine whatever Conspir- conspiracy is a little fun like it's been poisoned for me a lot of late considering the sure. world but it's it's fun to indulge like aliens might be real and sasquatch it's fun to lean into that shit with with the games workshop conspiratorial stuff like you don't need to look to conspiracy they want our money and they know for a fact they could steal it basically if they release dragons so something real is going on and who knows what it is if only they they had some sort of like the widest platform of access 
two creators and companies yeah, one has they, ever had to if they just did something as yeah. opposed to although they they taught us a bad lesson with the dragons if we just annoy them on every single social media post eventually they'll tell us what's actually happening i mean it's it is true there is a little bit of that that accountability there all right so next up you we've got the stella rosa black this is i've noticed yeah. a sparkling Line. Yes, this is a uh, frizzante, so this is going to be lightly sparkling, not quite champagne sparkling. Uh, this fella is going to be basically a sweet rosso from Italy. And you noticed something at the uh, liquor store. What was that, Miff? Was it that they were out of the 750s? Because that was unfortunate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't get the uh, the awesome label. I'm sad. That That's the main thing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure they, they sent us more of this for uh, Texas because of Dios. Yeah. Because there's like little sombrero skeletons and stuff on here. Fantastic. So our sure kitchen. this is mostly Southwest. Our, our kitchen predominantly stays decorated for a, a Dia de los Muertos. Um, yeah. but. but you notice that there are nutritional facts on this wine. I, so yeah. Sus. 95% of wines don't have nutritional facts on the back. Stella Rosa sure does, and this is twofold. One, because they want to appeal to women drinkers, so they put the nutritional facts so you can feel good about yourself while you're drinking it, but it also is because they add enough sugar to where it kind of puts it in this weird wine, food product kind of interesting. you know space that requires them to put nutritional facts on it. That's interesting. So because I'm sure off the nose you're gonna smell oh it, immediate it, sugar, just pure it's sugar, real sweet. <laughs> no, that there's like anything else that I might be picking up, like besides like a, maybe a small floral, a, a floral quality, is just pure sugar. This smells yeah. like I'm sniffing Kool Aid right now. Yes, big big Kool Aid vibes, big uh, big high C vibes. <laughs> Like, we haven't quite hit Welch's White Grape Juice territory yet. That's usually the, the Boone's Farm. <laughs> but... Ooh, you can put that on a snow cone. Love it. <laughs> That's, I, don't, I don't usually vibe with sweet, but I don't know if it's the, the light carbonation that helps this be a little yep. bit more bearable. Well, in the black, they put a little more red into it. It leans a little more roso than some of their other sweets, so it... A little bit more legs, but you know, this is definitely something you drink with spicy food. This is great with a Mexican dinner. This is good on a hot day. This is a good, mm -hmm. good like porch porch wine. pounder, yeah, cool pal, absolutely. Yeah, and you can throw in some like uh, frozen fruit, like you get the frozen berries for smoothies or something from the store. Throw that in as your ice, and you can have like a little, uh, you know, cheapy sangria. So is that how you'd make a sangria? You just buy, like, a frozen package of, like, raspberry, strawberries, that sort of thing? And just... Yeah, well, I mean, mine I usually base on Pinot Noir, generally. I put Pinot Noir in with, like, orange slices and some orange juice and rum. And uh, the frozen fruit I use as, like, ice cubes. So you're not watering down your wine. You're fruiting it up. There you go. Let's see. What uh, that'll definitely be uh, the summer. Summer decant cast throw on some sangria what i want to know is why are aussie prices so high if we have a free trade agreement <laughs> with the uk i you know above my pay grade personally i'd imagine import tax i know video games are also like more expensive in australia than they even even converted for inflation and stuff have any right to be even as pure digital <laughs> is becoming the lay of the land so it's got to be something with your y'all's trade laws it's because, uh, you know, you're a bunch of prisoners and they're they're taxing you. Mm -hmm. Just like they, they... I made that price guide. They certainly upcharge America more than the the difference in travel. So they're still punishing those those uppity colonies. For yeah, sure. that's, that's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> I saw a thousand RDP go off from Arctic Circle reminding everyone that chat gang ain't none to mess with. What other questions do we have? Yeah, Sasquatch stole the dragons. I think that's what exact that's exactly what happened. Yeah, frozen grapes of sangria, one hundred percent. And uh, good evening, uh, Dr. 
Dr. Lamp 101. <laughs> Dr. Lamp. Hey, my grandparents legally migrated. Most most immigrants do legally migrate. The vast majority of them. Uh, uh, in fact, most illegal immigrants are ones that legally immigrated and then just stayed when their visas expired. So uh, a hard majority. <laughs> like it's not even close. We're pretty sure my grandpa came here legally. My grandparents came here legally on work visas. Um, they they were uh, school. school All of his teachers. kids were born here, so yeah. count it. If I had to guess, they raised the prices due to shipping to Australia at some point and realized they can totally get away with keeping the prices high. Yep. Yeah. And GW has been right raising their prices consistently every year anyway. Like, they do a little price hike about, let's call it 18 months. They do a little mm -hmm. cha-ching, a Oops. buck or two. Yep. Well, and it, now they're on this new kick of pricing things according to their role on the battlefield. So it's which like, I oh, hate. this unit's important. Let's charge more for it. And that's a little meh well, for it, me. The, the Gargants at $200 was just like kind of a bridge too far for me and yeah even if like like obviously it's easy to be on a soapbox with something i don't intend to spend money on uh looking right. at you most people who boycott 40k shit and never literally <laughs> play it anyway um but uh like if i were a destruction player and i saw those things at 200 dollars, like i would nope the fuck right out of that uh wanting to play them like that's that's just a bridge too far um it feels bad enough like buying a single like just sort of standard foot hero at like sixty bucks right now, and then on the flip side, I got my Mortec Guard twenty for sixty, which felt like a freaking steal. So it's yeah. There's there's part of me because I was back back in my day uh, when the stores were just blister packs, uh, wall to wall with a couple random plastic regiment boxes. Like a hero was fifteen bucks. Mm -hmm. And you could just slap them anywhere. Now, the size and scale and obviously how good the models are. The details, yeah. yeah. Blown, I mean, blown that out of the water, but has it blown it like three times the price? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And with the company making record profits each year, kind of like the oil industry, just each year they set a new record. Yeah. Is what Games and, Workshop's kind of doing. And my GW friends aren't making any more money than they used to. Mm. <laughs> or they're getting their wages cut. I mean... All interesting things i talked about like the power of a captive audience on one of my random i think that might have actually been two nights ago i didn't stream last night uh just needed a break type thing um actually i got decision paralysis last night just kind of sat in front of my computer screen for a little bit couldn't decide what to stream so i just went and watched what we do in the shadows instead all night and i have no regrets uh fantastic show um Season three, I was worried that we were going to get the quality drop off. You know, that, that thing that always happens. You're, you're always waiting when there's a, sh a series you really, really love. In between seasons, you're always, like, sweating just a little bit that it, this will be the season it starts to suck. No, I'm, like, five or six episodes in. Chef's kiss. Season, uh, season 11 of The Simpsons? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, But, yeah, like, I, I was talking about, like, captive audience. And Games Workshop is essentially too huge to fail. There's enough complacent yeah. fans within the fandom at this size that they will remain profitable. This well, happens just the walk-ins by themselves. Mm -hmm. Like my my guy who runs the GW here, he just talks about how many like oh I sold fifty starter sets in the last two weeks and I I don't see those people ever again. Yeah, it's just like yeah. you could just keep selling starter sets and stay alive forever. Well, and and I don't think people are really thinking about I don't think people really think about like the product and the cost on that level, as long as it stays within the threshold of reasonable for their uh, entertainment dollar, which is really what every company has an understanding of that sort of like how much that like cost we're willing to pay to remain opiated in entertainment. Like this is just something across all the entertainment is uh, industries. There's a reason retail price of video games stayed at about 60 bucks and trying to hike it up to 70 had such a huge backlash. There's a reason these prices mm -hmm. tend to be a little bit set. There's a reason that, you know, sporting venues tend to have a pretty like set price that people are willing to pay like everyone that we know or rather we the entertainment industry across a spectrum whether it's consumer entertainment products and and consumer media like comics and stuff like that they understand 
those thresholds and they spend a lot of money in market research understanding the thresholds of what people are willing to play, uh, pay and stay complacent. And Games sure. Workshop clearly knows this. They, they're a $5 like, billion like dollar Steam, company. Steam could go, hey guys, guess what? We've been working on Half-Life 3 and Portal 3 this whole time. They're going to be $105. And I, I, people would still buy the shit out of it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they'd quite... grown on the internet, but it would like you'd see the quarter, like the end of the quarter statement and it'd be like, yep, everyone yeah. bought it. Hell, they'd pre-order it because they'd throw in like some stupid hats for some stupid robots if you pre-order it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And make a killing. And, and you'd lose 5 to 6% of people who would buy it. And those would be the loud guys on the internet, and half of them would buy it within two weeks because they're they're bored and jealous of people playing the game. Yep, the FOMO would take over. Like, and with Warhammer, our problem is is we're all addicts, mm -hmm. and we just want to army, 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 army. If Don't. I just bought my corn army and I have it set, I could be done for life for like three hundred, three hundred fifty bucks, especially if you buy secondhand. You could just be done. And that army will last you five or six years if you just were cool with it. Like, GW really is good about not just, like, killing models and, like, oh, this model now cannot be used. This model is banned from play. Like, they, they don't do any of that. You could just have an army that lives forever. If you had an Empire army uh, 15 years ago, you could still play it as Cities of Sigmar today. Mm -hmm. Most of those models are still in. Yeah. Or you could proxy them into something else, like... It's only because we want to buy six or seven armies, this cam camera center on this guy. I want to buy six or seven armies that we get to bitch about price so much because it's like, oh, well, how am I going to support my unhealthy plastic crack habit if yeah. all this shit's so expensive? Yeah, I, I, Travis, I, to, be, to be fair, I'm not, I'm not uh, here, like, shitting completely on Games Workshop. I do think it's worth being aware of these things, though. You know, I don't, I don't like telling people what to think. I've said that, I don't know how many times I have to say this. Like, I don't have to say. It. I don't know how many times I feel like saying this. Uh, sure. I don't like telling people what to think. I like saying what I believe and how I get there, and then letting people make their own judgments on on things. And uh, you know, qu think for yourself. Question authority. And in this case, with my camera on right now, I am authority. So you should question me too. Like, <laughs> and as Beth Underling question me more. Uh, no, but it, it's certainly not to just get into straight whataboutism. GW is the least of these big game companies. 100%. As far as problematic or big question marks. Mm -hmm. They have some places they can improve. Right, right. I mean, and that's the thing is, like, I haven't sensed them go towards, like, the Blizzard Activision, no. Ubisoft range of toxic. You they know, it, they it, made a deck building game and didn't put random card packs. That Underworlds game, every card is in a specific box. You know exactly how to build the deck you want by buying specific boxes. Mm -hmm. They could have just put out random card packs yeah. and made you go, go ahead and dig through 10 to find that uh, falling ceiling yeah. card. And, like, they didn't. So GW doesn't do all the shitty moves. No, no, they don't. They they make a profit, and they, and they know how to make a profit from their captive audience, and they'll continue to turn a profit. They make more of their money off of their digital product. Just through licensing, they don't actually have to lift a finger to make half of their their five billion dollars a year or whatever. Yeah, they make two point five billion dollars just on somebody else making a new Total Warhammer game. And that just, payout for Total War Three is going to be so sweet for them. <laughs> yeah, they're just going to like hear the cash register noise and collect their money. Um, and that's another one. And Tatnip will will tell you, Travis, uh, Travish, and and chat. If Total War Three came out and said, "Hey guys, you know we put a lot of love into this." It's going to be 95 out of the gate, dog. Yeah. Where you at? Travis is pre-ordering that game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, um, I haven't even looked into the prices of, of our, of our NB overlord. Uh, 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 what is it? Anatsa? Yeah. I know, I know that I will be setting an alarm for, what is it, like 10 a.m. U.S. Central Time to go online and immediately purchase it. I just know that they have a blank check for that model, and I'm hoping it's not more than sixty dollars. Yeah, re read that myth. Travis has twenty four hundred hours Shh. in TW two. That's my and I've seen that screen. He's not lying. So he paid sixty bucks and about forty more dollars worth of uh, DLC. Mm -hmm. If if he didn't pick it up on a sale, and so like <laughs> he got hundreds of dollars of, of entertainment out of that game. 
So just to reset real quick, the Stella Rosa Black is on here for like a just a cheap, decent sangria, good party wine type. Yeah, and it smells so sweet, and like I was about to like, oh, here we go, I'm gonna choke this down, but it's actually nice. I right, can right I right can drink that. Right on. It is um, since they put the nutritional facts on there. Actually, <laughs> five fluid ounces, so five shots is sixteen grams of sugar. Oof. Diabetics beware. Yeah, there you go. So what's up next? I've I've got actually uh, my own little entry here. Um, yeah, how about how about you take over Decant Cast and and talk to us about your pick here? All right. So I couldn't find the apple pie you mentioned, and the apple pie I know is just hooch. Um, hooch. <laughs> uh, so I actually went with a sort of a local uh, Wisconsin, honestly, like an entire uh, county. Uh, known for cherries, cranberries, and being a gigantic tourist trap, but also honey, and that would be Door Peninsula, which is uh, up north uh, in in uh, Wisconsin here, and they make a pretty decent mead. And mead is something I've come around to very recently. We're talking in the last, I don't know, like five years. I've started to like, like mead was kind of that like kind of sweet, like a little bit too sweet for me. I didn't quite like get it or like it. But then I discovered there are ranges of mead and they run the gamut. And they're used and drank by all kinds of cultures, you know, across the world. And, uh, you know, maybe I should look back into these things again. So I've got this uh, Door County. Uh, it's a sweet honey mead made from wildflowers. What they take the honey from is going to change what your mead tastes like in the character. Uh, Wild Flowers has a little bit more of a well, it's very it, it it tends to go a little bit more floral, from. But so I've got a mead here. This is going to be sweet, as said. But they do sell dry meads, and my personal favorite right now is they're getting into essentially bottling meads along the lines of like craft beers and stuff like that. Those are pretty darn good. So I'm just happy there's so much new and young money jumping into alcohol, and people are just really trying to find something new. Yeah. Yeah, the spritzer, spritzers were dead. Oh, no, nobody cares about wine coolers, all that. Now spritzers are destroying the category. Yeah. Yeah, These this uh, this one meat I keep over here called, what is it, Necromangocon? It's a, it's a pepper mango mead. It's amazing. Like, just absolutely amazing. So honey wine, it's going to be some semi-sweet. I remember it kind of tasting like Riesling. Yeah. A little yeah. thicker. This one is such a... This apple pie one, I don't know if anyone was able to find this. This one's such a mindfuck of like... It smells like an apple pie. It's fucking with my brain. There's nothing else. It's like, oh, I get a hint of apple pie. It's like, no, I have a piece of apple pie under my nose right now. Now, see, this, so is, this is exactly as advertised. I get honey. I get flowers. Maybe a little licorice to it, actually. Yeah, that's going to be in that fermentation process. Mm. This one is actually made out of apples as well. Like you said, a little thicker. You know, kind of coats them out there. Mm -hmm. But this is good. Yeah, this, meads, this meads good. are just, uh, like, it, it just comes down to supply. Like, they're just not as popular as the others because it's hard to harvest enough honey to turn it into alcohol market's not as big anyone who knows me knows that it is my dream to one day retry, retire to a cabin up north when, when when i finally sell my book and i get to be a full-time writer i'm going to pay enough money to have a fiber connect uh, a fiber line uh board directly to my cabin up north otherwise be relatively remote i'm going to keep bees uh and just do internet stuff and write the whole time and just kind of like become a total recluse it is my dream this is actually my dream. To One become day. become recluse. Got it. Yeah, to become a full... I, I just want to be the really cool kind of quirky old man uh, that, like, people talk about. Like, uh, like, don't go to old man Mephisto's cabin, you know? And then, like, they... Finally, the kids on a dare show up, and they see me in, like, the full-on beekeeper gear and are freaked out at the sight alone and just, like... Yeah, the, <sighs> the, Goonies, the Goonies show yeah. up, and it's the mystery of Meph's mansion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'll just be like a totally righteous dude, and I'll turn out to be a little bit more like, uh, 
like uh, James Earl Jones in The Sandlot, where you show up and I actually just have a bunch of like sweet comic books and swag and I like give to the children and you know yeah like, the, the one stays behind and you give him like a Lobo comic or something yeah <laughs> here kid get ready to get rad <laughs> mm. so uh, I know a lot of uh, the people especially in your audience Meth are Midwestern Wisconsin Indiana so the Oliver Wine Company is an Indiana born and raised company. So it should just be all over the damn place in Indiana. It just started making it to Texas. And uh, I mean, I cover about seven states currently and we're pushing it all over the place. This apple pie is such, so it's so weird. Get it for Halloween or Thanksgiving just as like a, hey, try this. And <laughs> you just watch people's face like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. Drinking an apple pie. Yeah, just pull pull a pull up to like Thanksgiving with it or something. Yeah, it's Ooh. it's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Boo Radley, uh, D J D Salinger, Mephisto. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By then, I'll be able to uh, to grow a full beard, you know. So I'll, I'll like have the the total beard. My beard will have a pompadour, and then I'll have a pompadour, and it'll just Ooh. be yeah. Be like a fucking JoJo's character who's a beekeeper. <laughs> Mod Dank dropping a Twitch Prime for five years. A good dream you have, Meph, Skull, and Slancha. <laughs> this doesn't always going on and on about Skull, you know. I was never one for dip myself. Well, that would be the Viking toast. Skull. Yeah. Did you see that? Mm -mm. I missed it. <laughs> Somebody clipped that. <laughs> the wine cork just flew out of this bottle. Oh, amazing! Haunted, too spooky. Oh, spooky! Someone clipped the clip the uh, cork popping out there. Yeah, the sweet in me. There you go. And uh, I, I'm Irish, so I, I often respond with uh, slancha, which would be uh, the Irish toast. Gallic. So, what are you getting your meat on the second or third sip? As advertised, it's not as cloying as uh, some meads I've had. The Door County. I mean, it just tastes like a sort of... Um, just like a lightly fermented sort of like uh, juice. It doesn't even really taste like honey anymore at this point. It's crisp. Like I said, it is thicker. 11.5% alcohol. Not, not bad. Not bad. This one's from Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. So I have a... a, a do, do people want a Wisconsin story right now real quick? Yeah, pump it out. All right. So uh, around the time I got my driver's license, my full-on driver's license, I had a hardship license when I was a little bit younger uh, so I could drive cars uh, uh, for the auto body shop I worked for and... Uh, around the and you know go pick up cars and bring them back and so on and so forth. Oh my, SJ dropping the uh, the tier one subs, hitting the community with them. Enjoy those. Enjoy all the we'll emotes. Be sure to check out Haywo four times a week and spam the chat gang and Nagash memes at him, please. Yes. <laughs> he just has a bot who does his modding, so overwhelm the bot. Enjoy yeah, overwhelm the bot. the bot. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! Oh Gripper. my! Big Gripper. Big. Well, well, you just popped off, CJ, not to be on uh, outdone <laughs> with the big gifter. I mean, Twenty not tier like one that, subs. Uh, Rantathon when I outdid him there. Yeah, yeah. CJ refuses to be outdone. We gifting, <laughs> big gifting. Uh, <laughs> so this is going to keep going off. I hope you enjoy uh, Chris Tucker saying, ooh, punctuating all my... Uh... <laughs> it's getting chilly in here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, so I, I lived in Green Bay right about the time I, I, I got my license. I, I bounced kind of all over Wisconsin and Minnesota growing up and part, part of North Carolina, a little bit of New York City, actually, uh, for the summers uh, of my teen years. But I got my license in Wisconsin. Uh, I would have been living in Green Bay about this time, or De Pere, one of the two. Um, and we used to drive, like, you would just drive when you get your license. It's it's 
Ooh, Driving, yeah. field parties, gaming, board games. It's pretty much all we did. And watching, you know, Packers and stuff. Like, very little to do in Wisconsin. I think there's a lot of people who could, like, in, who live in rural America can probably identify with that. But Drive you know. to uh, Blockbuster or Hollywood Video and just walk it two or three times. Drive to the next location. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, no, exactly. And so you just drive. And one time we got this idea to, to go up to Sturgeon, uh, Sturgeon Bay. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So I had my uh, Subaru Justy, uh, 1988 green two-door Subaru Justy with a little skull on the uh, on the coat hanger that was the antenna because the antenna itself had fallen off a long time ago bought it from texas by the way uh you, uh in wisconsin it's 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 pretty commonplace to actually buy your cars your used cars from texas or a dealer that you know who deals in texas because no salt a lot better no condition salt. than the cars yes that it's something we do not have any concept of it's like you go to the the midwest or the northeast and it's like why are all the bottoms of your cars rusting why does everyone talk about rust coating your car what the fuck is that <laughs> yeah. we don't deal with that at all now counterpoint when it snows three inches uh the state shuts down so <laughs> i don't know if it's worth it or not yeah yeah so we um yeah so so i had the super adjusty 1988 i four speed uh, all wheel drive this was the perfect Wisconsin beater. I to this day love this car. People talk about like if you go if you could get one car from your youth back, it's it's my Subaru Justy. My Volkswagen Jetta GL, uh, which is essentially a, a retired racing car uh, with a yep. dual overhead ca cam motor. That one was a very good car, but the Justy man, you never felt bad doing anything to it. I did a third gear burnout on accident in that sucker. Like <laughs> again, salt. Um, <laughs> Like I love that thing. Uh, had the little uh, had the little eight ball for the sh gear shifter, like the whole thing. You know, the first car where you're just like you trick it, you think you're you're cool and edgy, and uh, it was green, just this hideous gr '80s green color. And uh, you look, you rem like keep in mind, I'm like pseudo goth Mephisto around this time. And uh, <laughs> so I've got the eight ball and the little skull antenna, um, and we're driving up to Sturgeon Bay, and I get pulled over by a fucking boat patrol. Um, like boat patrol. Boat patrol. And I look at the guy. And he comes up, and it's just me and uh, me, a girlfriend, one of our friends. And uh, he pulls me over, and I look over at him. And I'm like, uh, I'm sorry, officer. How many knots was I going? He laughed so fucking hard. He just asked for my license and pretty much let me go. He, he just did a, one of those customary uh, sniffs. It's like, do I smell drugs? And, and, and that's like, exactly oh. what it. That's exactly what it was. He's looking for for kids joy riding. Being drunk, whatever it was, I was going fast, you know. So, so goth yeah. with the eight ball and lime green, you were just like a, wh a white zombie goth back in the day. Pretty much, big Rob Zombie fan. That's all. Yeah, that's what it was. No, I loved, I loved that car. Was it uh, David Hasselhoff in Boat Patrol? It was fucking Boat Patrol. It was a uh, like a white vehicle with yellow lettering, and just. It was a, a truck or like a jeep or something like not even it, like a jeep. And this is before it was like kind of commonplace to start seeing the the like the uh, what is it? We got Ford 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 uh, Ford Explorers tend to be cop cars now. You know, or, so, uh, what is it? expeditions. Yeah, expeditions, whatever it is. Like a little bit before it was customary to see those so much. You know, so it was just weird getting pulled over by this like white and yellow jeep, basically. Ford Bronco. Yeah. The Ford Bronco Cop, the protagonist of all horror movies. <laughs> right, Ford Bronco Cop, exactly. Who is non-goth pirate meth? <laughs> uh, here in Australia, t getting your license takes about three years. You need to do a test uh, for your L's. Do 120 Jeez. hours night. Uh, do 120 hours plus 20 hours night driving with a supervisor with a full license. Then you do the driving test after you're on your red piece for two years you, yeah your red license for two years i think then you have a written exam and you're on your it's it's actually pretty intensive here in wisconsin and it, it varies state to state but you have like your driver's permit first and you have to have that for some amount of time and you're not allowed to drive that without a licensed adult uh when you're on your driver's permit um so what was interesting is i had my hardships hardship license and uh uh which you can get at about 14 and a half uh, provided that you can prove that in my case, so I was living with relatives, but I was sort of one of those people who was between the cracks in, uh, the legal system, uh, because my, my mom had lost custody of me and my grandma got me out of foster care. 
And what ended up happening is my grandma, my mom, and my dad were all claiming me on their taxes. And at some point, the IRS was like, like this one, this one, you know, social security number how, is how is, dependent could this kid be? Jesus, right, right. <laughs> And, it, it, like, had just been persistent. And so, like, essentially, like, the IRS, like, got mad at my whole family and it wasn't anything else. Uh, and from there, I went through, like, a court process to essentially become an independent. Uh, so where no one could claim me anymore. I didn't really have a legal guardianship. But I didn't not have legal guardianship. It was just this weird, weird case growing up where I was just completely between the cracks. I lived with different relatives the schools never scrutinized it too much when I enrolled with the schools because you just – you'd say you – like, they didn't really scrutinize it. Like, so I'd have the forms. I had a birth certificate so and a social security card, so never really thought about it too much. And it was just this – but because I was sort of through the cracks, I was able to get a hardship license because I worked in an auto body shop, and you're allowed to work for relatives at that age if it's a relative business. Right. And uh, since it was if my uncle's – you need to be the earner for your family at, like, 14, you can drive. Right. Kind right thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'll I'll bum out Hades. Uh, my dad signed a piece of paper, and then I got a license. <laughs> no, where I was going with that though is for my hardship license. If I was getting a car uh, for the for the for the auto body shop, I could be on my hardship license. When I had my driver's permit though, if I was just driving my car, I had to be with an adult. Oh sure. So I had to like, if I was doing the hardship stuff, I could be on my hardship, and if I wasn't, then I had to obey the, all the weird strict laws of my driver's permit and then my temporary yeah, it's, license it's a child cdl basically pretty much uh hey officer i'm on the cop i'm on the uh, the clock right now i gotta go to work well and that's what i was when before i got had my driver's permit because there's a gap between when you can get your driver's permit and your temporary license um if i ever got caught pulled over i was supposed to say i was picking up a car for my uncle and then like give him the phone yeah but like did you did you actually take a driver's test yes yeah, I, I, I actually failed. I failed. Uh, I failed the first driver's test. Uh, I did my and I quote, "Why turn too fast?" So I auto failed. Ah, well, uh, it it doesn't take a whole lot to get a license, and it shows. <laughs> it shows real bad when the skull when the sky turns gray and it begins to fall. This city fucking falls apart. People start driving thirty with their flashers on in the rain, like they're. Ford Expedition is going to spin out on a highway. Like, oh, it's brutal in this town. So I got ganked by my sister. Or my sister, oh, my God. I got ganked by my, do uh, my daughter here. Um, I got to go <laughs> check on her. Lulu's oh, missing sure, sure. MIA. You're going to have to vamp for a little while here. Good spam chat. Yeah, chat. Spam it with your questions about whiskey, spam, wine. Spam big in chat. Yeah, spam big. There you go. Big in chat. Maybe I can just do a bunch of fireball shots before he gets back. Hmm. ASMR for you. Shh. Just blew out that headphone. <laughs> Uh, CJ, how bad is San Antonio for, for drivers? I mean, I'm mostly exaggerating, but when it rains, people basically just stop driving correctly. Uh, the, the main difference between Dallas and San Antonio is all of our streets are free, and it's not like half toll roads like in Dallas. I fucking hate how many to goddamn toll roads are in Dallas. Uh, I don't know if you do your own brewing, but I have issues consistent carbonation on my mead. That is a question I cannot answer. Always been a, a seller, uh, not a producer. A little cinnamon red hot. Delicious. Foley artist with this. Fireball. Play ball.
It paid to work the American dream. Hmm. Oh yeah, I keep confusing Dinma every time I say SA. All right. What did I miss? Big chat, big Nagash. I like it. You missed nothing. We were up to nothing. I'll have you know. <laughs> Talking uh, about the difference between Dallas and San Antonio driving. Uh, I don't know if you do your own brewing, but I have issues getting consistent carbonation on my he on my mead. Um, I did. The, go ahead. I've never been on the production side, so I'm useless in that question. I did. Uh, I did home brewing of beer for a while there. The main thing I found was was uh, temp temp control in your house for as far as carbonation goes. It, it's simply you simply must have great temp temper temperature control, and obviously if you're using a consistent like uh, you know your yeasts or whatever your your yeast is going to need to be pretty consistent throughout too and with mead as i recall a lot of mead carbonation comes from uh the sort of uh internal yeast that already exists within the honey um and so you're gonna it just i mean it depends on the honey you're using what harvest that honey was that year it's it's just going to be a, inconsistent unless you have some sort of like assistant to that or adding your own extra sort of yeast to it yeah, and the fermentation process for most things is so scary because if you don't properly end the fermentation and you package it and then second fermentation starts and it just explodes in the packaging. Mm -hmm. uh, like we did a, um, you know those little dailies, margarita pouches mm -hmm. where you freeze them and it comes out like a little slush? They did one of those for Arbor Mist and the entire initial launch double fermentation. So these things hit the warehouses, got all the way to the store, and just started popping on the shelves. It was oh, a God. massacre. And uh, you just don't recover from that. I mean, you know, people talk about, like, GW's uh, messing around with their delivery schedule. They delivered a full product, designed it, produced it, put it in packaging, put it on shelves, and then it exploded, and they had to pick it back up, and that was the end of that. Like, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Quick chat, whistle nonchalantly. <laughs> Yeah, we we were up to nothing. There's nothing on my desk that's new, and what? we certainly weren't drinking it while you were gone. I see the fireball there. <laughs> so next up, we got the port, right? No, we'll 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 chat at the end of the show on port because port is to always be enjoyed at the end of an evening okay. while you chat. So okay. we're gonna get through uh, some fun, maybe for some people, some homework <laughs> of drinking fireball and screwball. Okay, I don't. I, wasn't I don't do fireball. I, I wasn't don't... just doing shots of fireball while you were gone. That okay. certainly didn't just okay. happen. But I, um, I do have screwball, and I, um, I can polish a bottle off of this a day. Okay. This is dangerous it is, shit. It is so sneaky good, and uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. And some some party tricks that maybe you haven't considered with that one. Okay. Uh, but fireball. We'll do fireball if first. anyone was brave enough in chat to actually pick up the shopping list, shopping list was a little quick this time, so I wouldn't be shocked if uh, if we're mostly drinking by ourselves tonight. But if you haven't had this American institution <laughs> of Sazerac Fireball, if you're a big fan of your cinnamon red hots or, you know, some of those, like, what are the hot tamales and some of those candies, it's basically like drinking that straight and... Uh, Probably most of you haven't drank it since college or late high school, depending on your level of depravity. It's big red bubble gum. Is it's big red bubble gum? Great, great analogy there. <laughs> Fireball is great if you have a cinnamon roll consumption problem. I think it's one of those things that like, it, like it, it it appeals to a range of people who want to do shots. It it yes. it lassos in, uh, you know, like. The sort of people who who lean more towards like sweeter, more frou frou, like easier, da like drinks to down, but also it's of a high enough ABV that you know the bros feel cool doing shots of it. What I oh, find yeah, particularly it's... funny about it is they sell it in like machine gun shot containers now at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fifty mLs. Yeah, the little, the little yeah, yeah. Like you can buy like a bucket 10, of them, like, oh, yeah. or you can get the. It comes in bags now. Like this, this is such a successful 
alcoholic beverage that it's just it's beginning to like branch out into alternate ways of consumption now it's not like it's not good enough to sell it in a bottle anymore <laughs> yeah it, this this drink and like it has just enough of a a yuck factor and like i don't want to put that in such a negative way but there's definitely a, a taste with it when you shoot it where like that's what the college kids love it's like oh we're gonna do fireball shots bro it's like we're, we're gonna do jaeger shots bro it's oh, like see, the, I love you, yeah and certainly this is the same thing as jaeger you could you could put this with Red Bull. You could put this in, uh, you know, you could put it with Coke. You want a cinnamon Dr. Pepper. Uh, but just shoot it. Shoot it and have a good time. It's also part of this, like, the ABV has gone down slightly because they found out that the higher the alcohol is, especially with flavored vodkas, the higher the alcohol is, the less you actually taste your flavoring agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've dropped and them all around the like cold, and now. they drink it faster because the alcohol burned so hard. So all those flavored vodkas were at forty percent, forty percent, forty percent, and they all dumped out to thirty. And now you actually taste the shit. So it's like, oh, your chocolate, your double chocolate vodka, your your wedding cake uh, Seagram's vodka, mm. actually tastes like what it's supposed to taste like. And then there's obviously it's still thirty percent alcohol, but right after you get past thirty five, the burn is such that you just lose a bunch of the flavor. And thus your audience of, you know, the, the audience they always want for those flavored ones is young kid or young kids. college. They want college. Uh, young yes. adults and, um, and, uh, and millennial women and women at parties. That's what everybody wants. That's what they talk about in every stupid sales meeting. Mm-hmm. And that's why they lower the alcohol value of a lot that's of That's interesting. That's so. interesting. I never knew that. No, see, I don't, I don't, I don't do, I don't, I don't fuck with fireball. Um, I, I do rumple mints when we, when we go out, like our shot for like pregaming is rumple mints. Which well, is... you don't fuck you don't fuck with fireball. I don't fuck with chat gang. So. <laughs> <sighs> Delicious. Molly won't do rumble mints anymore. And me. not nutritious. That's for sure. So let's get on to uh, so that. That's a fun one to have at parties. Make people do cinnamon cinnamon shots. See, see, rumble mints taste like burning and peppermint. So it's like, it's like God, I had a buddy who we would go. Uh, Travis knows him because uh, <laughs> we went to college together. Uh, uh, our friend Adam, we would go to this bar, and it would be five dollar burgers and beer. Because God bless Lubbock, it was a good burger too. Lubbock, and Texas, always... huh? What's that? Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I went on. to Tech. Yeah, right on. I went to uh, Clown College USA at Tech. They'll let anybody know that's cool. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, like, he would always make us do fucking Goldschlager shots. So we'd get done with class at, like, 1130, go across, get a burger, and we'd do, like, four fucking Goldschlager shots. Like, just drinking toothpaste. Damn. Get some more ASMR going. It's hard to. You can't quite hear cold spirits pour. Well, you do. The the viscosity. Yeah. Well, you do. You do stumble mints because you start you start out with it. First time chatter from Squigs McGee. Love the name, by the way. Welcome to Chat Gang. That's a solid name. You Squid Billy's fan, maybe. So I and CJ Yobusta, yes, uh, graduated from Tech in 2012. Because again, they'll hand anybody a degree if you pay them enough money. So I'm just gonna give myself a healthy pour of uh, of screwball here. Oh Neat. sure, sure. We can sit on rumple mints or rumple mints. We do not sit on rumple mints. Sit on Screwball for a while. Uh, So this is a fairly new product. If you've not heard of it, Screwball is kind of the new hotness right now where Fireball took over for a hot dam and and created that category. Screwball is creating this weird flavored whiskey category that has kind of exploded. This is a peanut peanut butter whiskey. And I would say it less tastes like peanut butter and more just tastes like straight peanuts. Yeah. And I like that a lot. This is uh, like I I really like I really like Screwball. There's a there's a competitor brand that we have like sold on the shelf right near it. I can't remember the name of it right now. They do a, a peanut butter cup one, which is chocolate mm-hmm. peanut butter. Also amazing. Um, yeah. this, the Screwball though, I, I actually like it on a little bit of ice because, like I said, I will kill this bottle if left to my own devices. John, uh, remember, remember, Jonas, 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 yeah, yeah, Jonas, yeah. No, this is different. Chat gang, this is a social event. This is we're we're able to. Um, so I will, I will, accidentally kill this bottle because I like drinking whiskey anyway. 
it's my preferred. I like bourbon and bourbon whiskey scotch, right? Like the your whiskey ca- categorically, I like whiskey. Um, tend yeah. to lean a little bit more towards bourbons than I do other types of whiskey. Yeah, if you're if you're a big whiskey drinker, you like your Four Roses, your Buffalo Trace, something like that. This is a nice little palate cleanser that you throw in every five or six glasses of whiskey on a week, and you go, oh, I'll have a little peanut butter tonight. Treat treat myself. But this has made things like now there's a there's a wicked pickle that's like pickle whiskey. There's all kind yeah, of I've, wacky whiskey flavors. Yeah, so this whiskey. is the reason all these wacky whiskey flavors exist, because they nailed it with this. 35% alcohol, so you're getting a lot of the flavor. And just like the apple pie, just like the fireball, you pick up this shot and you smell it. It just smells like peanut butter. It's creepy how much this smells like peanut butter. Well, food like, science, man, they're they're so good at what they do. I... I, I, I I love to talk about it in the context of the McRib. Yes, McDonald's is a perfect example of food science. <laughs> like they, the 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 R and D that that companies put into the food that they sell and the beverages that they sell is, I mean, just like what we were talking about before. Games Workshop understands the sort of captive audience and, and stuff like that. Food's a lot different. You gotta like keep people interested in food and keep people buying food and like so it's a little bit different with food. Um, but like this, the the R and D, understanding the market, doing the research, you know, selling the stuff, they put a lot of effort into that stuff. Taco Bell is fantastic at this too, by the way. Um, like the Taco Ugh. Bell, like fries, is is just a pure genius of food science type move from them. Just some some real some real big taco energy. Going yeah, on. like oh let let's let's change the game by selling the thing everything everybody else sells. Yeah, and doing it better than them. <laughs> By, like, just giving you a little cheese sludge with it and seasoning the fries. Like, mind blown. And they sell out every single time. It just prints the money. Literally, they do the Gabe Newell thing with Steam where he's like, I'm just going to discount a bunch of games 50%. And, like, he just hears the cash register noise when he does that. Yeah. Like, Taco Bell just did that with the the taco fries. But but the McRib, I think, is one of the the sort of excellent illustrations of sort of what I, I just call food science. Just... You know, generically, which and goes into like to call it cooking. It's science. No, no, it's 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 not just that because it's it's the actual research of flavor mm-hmm. profiles, knowing what will sell. You know, the the sort of marketing interests of it. It's not just cooking, because cooking is you know fantastic too, and there is a lot of sort of science to cooking. If you love Alton Brown, yo, shout outs to sure. the guy. Um, but the sort of like food science, like Baja Blast, they. They had to, the R and D going into Baja Blast to get a flavor that goes perfect with spicy food, and and making it the like the meme that it is even you know with the thin Baja Blast line on the flags now and ha 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 like, yeah. um, oh yeah we stand good eats like a motherfucker if, up in here if if you like Baja Blast Stella Rosa yeah 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 there you go. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I could I, I could see like having a fucking quesadilla from uh, T Bell with this st- Stella Rosa, oh, beautiful. But the, but the McRib, yeah, yeah, he studied it in, in business classes. The way they do it as a limited I run, studied it. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, even the like uh, the the notion of like they don't just put like the regular onions on it; they put the onion slivers on it with like the one fucking pickle. Though they developed and researched that. To make it what it is, like it, there's, it's it's pretty much this sort of tent pole of like food science and marketing, and yeah. they're doing it. You don't think alcohol, one of the most profitable industries in the entire U.S., let alone the world, isn't? You think that they didn't choose peanut butter on purpose, you know, and just really nail it when they could have been like, oh well, what about strawberries or what about? Well, they knew that they they had the fireball crowd with fireball. They knew that they had. You know the the sort of strawberry daiquiri crowd with the spritzers and shit coming back. Like, mm-hmm. they needed to get the the Mephisto crowd. Yeah, and they did. And it was like, oh, if I if I develop some something that's high quality and it's you know strawberry tropical whatever mix, is that going to get people to go from Boone's Farm to this? Probably not. But if I make a peanut butter whiskey and I make a nice sleek package like this and I make that motherfucker smell like a jar of peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Like a jar of peanut butter doesn't smell like a peanut peanut butter as much as this whiskey does. Mm-hmm. That will make somebody who you know their regular thing is Jim Beam. That'll make them put a bottle of screwball in the cart every once in a while. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that I mean, you're you're even getting to where you're weaponizing nostalgia with it. 
with peanut butter? Oh, sure. Because like, here's the two things you do with this. If you haven't played with Screwball, if you're just a sipper of Screwball, which is an absolutely acceptable way to drink it, uh, two, of my, two of my suggestions. One, they sell a uh, 360 vodka, makes a double chocolate vodka. Half shot of Screwball, half shot of double chocolate, you're drinking Reese's Cup Heaven right there. Right up. Easy, easy. You can put it with coffee cream liqueur mm. and an espresso for a nice little Irish coffee in the morning. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. If you want to get crazy, grape jello. Peanut butter and jelly jello shots, baby. Now we're talking. I'm going to make Molly do that for our, our Halloween party, even if it's a Halloween party at two. <laughs> Played a drinking game with friends once where we all took a shot whenever someone oh, died Christ. in Bloodborne. Oof. It was the only wow. time I actually got blackout drunk. Yeah, no shit. That was. Oof. Like. <laughs> You accidentally, you're friends with that guy who uh, got didn't get hit through all five Dark Soul games mm. <laughs> in a row. Did you see that run? No. There's I've seen fellow, some speed runs where they, they've been hit. There's a fella who did a run of all the Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Demon Souls in sequence mm. without getting hit, mm. which is fucked up. I don't understand that. Like, literally, the creator of the game's like, that didn't happen. What the fuck? What are you talking about? A guy got through it without getting hit. There's it's bullshit. <laughs> there's speedrunning categories where it's hitless, but every single one of them. Like, K. Witty, uh, one, of, one of the guys, I actually auto-host him at night. He's he switched his schedule recently, but he's a he's a diehard Bloodborne fan. He, he's played some Sekiro. Like, he plays some stuff. Right now, like, it, it really sucks. Oh, gosh, I'm going to go into some Twitch meta, Twitch inside Get baseball, it. if you Get will. It. But uh, he does Bloodborne, and he does hitless runs, like, relatively frequently. He's on, like, new game... 30 like a new game like 36 plus or something like that right now to where one hit kills you anyway mm-hmm. on his like speed run loops and like it's just insanity like <coughs> he's fantastic for watching he's also uh got a like an afro samurai motif with everything he does so like you know he's a weeb like um great dude um <laughs> but uh yeah like I, I one of the things like that's that's really weird for um and i probably don't need to preach to everyone who's here right now i think all of you guys are in the in, in the big flats anyway, but uh, if someone's watching this VOD right now on YouTube, uh, you know, check out Haywo's live stuff. He's live streaming now. Like, watch that as much as possible. Support him as much as possible because it is not live content creation. Or sorry, one live content creation is difficult. Um, this format here, what I do, is a lot more difficult. Well, it's it's difficult in a different way than from script to content. Yeah. Script to content is its own sort of can of worms, but knowing how to like fill that air keep an energy going, direct a conversation, all that stuff. And this is this is a very relaxed mode of what I normally do. But, like, to do it live four or five days a week and that be your income is insane. And Twitch itself is uncharitable to... Uh, is uncharitable to their, their... Especially their smaller streamers. Because they know that they're where their cash cows are, right? Um, yeah. And so my boy K Witty. Uh, another uh, Maxi Lobes, another uh, spooky game streamer. Like, like I wasn't even thinking about it because I always think of like people like Kaywitty and 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 Maxi and you know Haywo in in our own little circle. I always think of them as like made men or you know, like made streamers. Like they're they kind of had what I wanted for a long time, which is to have that like consistent audience of you know like a hundred to depending on the high end, like a thousand seems too much for me, but like a hundred and you could do it full time, right? You know. 100 with X and number. You, you do the math and, like, man, I could do this full time. But then, like, I, I watched Maxi go through, like, a small... And it, it's not really my story to tell, so this is just more of an observation. Um, I watched him, like, kind of hit a fatigue moment because he's the guy who's known for Silent Hill. And he's run Silent Hill every single year around this time at, to do, like, sub drives and stuff like that. That's how he, like, drives his subscribers up because he's one of the best speedrunners of Silent Hill in the world. And we're talking the gamut of all the Silent Hills. Yeah, it's like him and Punchy and that's it. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And and to watch him like get fatigued on this game because he knows he has to keep going back and playing it to keep his audience. And then when he goes and like he, he wanted to try to break into Devil May Cry and he kind of did so, so pretty successfully. But to transition over from like doing that to Devil May Cry was a huge risk. And he's got other games he wants to play. But five days a week, he pretty much has to play the Silent Hill games. And K. Woody's yeah. running into it, too, with, with Bloodborne. Like, he loves Bloodborne to death. And 
like I said, like 33 plus new game plus game playthroughs or I might even be underestimating. It could be more insane than that. Because every now and then he'll do like a new, like a, a standard new game and he's just got his one game that he cycles through on. And, you know, I... Like, I, you think about these people who are made men or made women or, or made envies where you're like, that's what I want. And then you don't think about the tax of doing the same thing that made you famous over oh. and over and over again. Like, uh, like Heiwo, like he, let, let, if you rewind a couple months, he was sick and kind of off for like two weeks. I think it was in September. And I was like, you know what? He's picked a perfect time. There's no news happening in AOS. Like, he's literally missing no content. And then no news continued. Oh, man. And the fact that he turns AOS content into a five-hour show every Monday and then, like, a three-and-a-half-hour show every Friday, and there's literally nothing fucking happening in the game yeah. is, like, wow, good, good on you every time. I don't know how how he goes from, like, six, six to ten on Monday and Friday of, like, an actual show. And he's a, he's a lot more concise as an individual than, than me. I have a very rambling, air-filling style. <laughs> you know? like, um, it's called Raincast for a reason. Yeah, right. Well, thanks to him. Like, he, he gave it the name. Like, I just, uh, like, we just were shooting the shit one day. And, you know, as we often do off-air, right? It's usually nor normally a phone call. And one day it decided to be a Discord call instead. And we recorded it. Um, yeah. Like, I, my content, I am thankful that, like, I've always kind of done my own thing, and I've never really been, like, lassoed to any particular Age of Sigmar specific thing, because I'm always looking for the adjacencies. But even right now, I, I'm getting comments from some people, like, I, I picked up a couple new patrons, and they're like, oh, this is the best your content's been in, the, like, in two years. And I'm like, really? It hasn't felt like that for me. Like, it's actually felt quite the opposite for me. It's felt like I've been, like, sort of languishing and, like... And like, I don't know. Maybe it's I, I'm I am someone who does well under pressure. So when I am kind of well, straight, I, I think you're still coming off a little bit of the the rantathon high. I think, and you're you're like there's there's nothing really to produce after that. So it's like uh, I guess. Well, that's uh, my Super Bowl, right? Like yeah, yeah. Like what you know, and and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's off season right now. Pretty much, yeah. Like I'm in my off season, and then like tournaments will pick back up, and I'll, I'll have I'll I'll do some tournament coverage and. Uh, you know, like interview people who win tournaments and, and do stuff like that, and a couple battle tomes will come out, and and I'll find a way to make a joke out of the battle tome and do a different episode. You know, do the bait and switch thing that I do, where I'm like, oh, we're gonna talk about this battle tome. Do the battle tome for about like, do like a 20 minute intro, talk about the battle tome for about 40 minutes, and then suddenly we're talking about something else, like and talk about street sharks for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 animorphs. Thank you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't I don't have the the problem that other content creators have. Like I actually thought this is my mind going way back in 2020 I would be set up the best of a lot of the content creators to do my show when events stopped because I'm like oh cool I've never really done like real AOS content anyway you know and yeah. I've actually never recovered whereas all their shows have because the people who came to me because I was just an an extra AOS show to watch between watching episodes of Warhammer Weekly and Honest Wargamer and, like, waiting for a Halo video once a month. Like, I was just, like, th that weekly thing they could put on and paint to. But without that interest driving people to my show, you know, to, like, have that ancillary extra sort of side content, it just, when the well dried up for everybody, it completely dried up for me. And the wells came back for them, and it never came back for me. I'm, I'm still not at my numbers from the first year. I like yeah. I get I used to be a thousand an episode, and it's it's just not that right now. Yeah, I mean, it certainly, uh, I don't know how much of of the show has been like focused on actually watching or doing AOS things. This currently. clearly is not. There's no pretense here, though, for this show. Like we we no. the, we we just occasionally talk about AOS between drinking, and I'm kind of just like your uh, the the animal guy on Johnny Carson. I mm. show up when the <laughs> there's not a comedian available. I'm like, yeah, let's drink. Let's talk mm. about alcohol. Oh, I think that's being a little uncharitable. At its core, AOS Radcast has always been about passion. Oh sure. It's the 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 show is about is about viewing things through the lens of passion. And seeing how other adjacent things 
people are similarly passionate about and then showing people that sort of mirror image of you know your passion for this little tiny army game is very similar to someone's passion about wine is very similar to someone's passion about street fighter shout outs to doc, doc king like to to show that sort of like that it's the passion that unites us not just the thing it, it has to do with a revelation i had when i was younger relative to now but not like a kid or anything when i was the opinionated nerd guy who wanted to tell you how all the nerd shit you liked was bad and how all the nerd shit i liked was good and then and then at one point i realized that like it's all bad <laughs> and what and we're just passionate about it and that passion was the interesting part it's same thing why i love sports ball like i see just a bunch of nerds they literally cosplay more often than any regular ass cosplayer they're wearing people's names on the back of their shirts daily as regular ass fashion statements you're a fucking nerd okay nerd <laughs> oh and like if if you're a big sports ball guy and you haven't gotten to dorktown on youtube or uh, i think it's called secret base now mm. they changed their name and it's like all of these random super dorky stat shows and oh god yeah in history of of like they did the history of the atlanta falcons it was a six-part like seven hour long documentary and it was super comprehensive, but it's like they did a, an episode of like, oh, what happens if, uh, what's Barry Bonds' OPS if he doesn't have a bat, but the pitcher doesn't know he doesn't have a bat? Nerd! Yeah. His, <laughs> spoiler alert, his OPS is still better than 99.5% of all baseball players who have ever played. Barry Bonds good at fucking baseball. Good at the game of baseball. Stop, yeah. Stop bullying him, kids. Yeah, He's no, fucking great. No, that's that's funny. No, I, I um for me it it cinched it when 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 fantasy football hit. As soon as fantasy football hit, oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. this is just fucking Dungeons and Dragons. And, and now it's worth money. It's just magic. <laughs> <laughs> like it's Magic the Gathering now. Yeah. 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 Fucking crazy. Speaking of companies that are worse than Games Workshop, Wizards of the Coast, um, <laughs> DraftKings. <laughs> yeah, DraftKings. <laughs> uh, dude, like I'm, I'm watching a lot of baseball right now. Go Strohs. Ah, uh, gross. And um, not, not campaign. the Strohs. I'm, I'm a, I'm a residual Astros fan right now, uh, just because I don't like the Sox. Um, yeah. I hate Bang, it was, banging the trash cans loudly, as I say. Yeah. Uh, but as soon, as soon as the, as soon as the Brewers were out, I, I just like, I quit caring. I'm a homer how, through and through. Let's just completely rant cast. How the fuck did the, the Brewers lose? I had them going to the series this year. Their pitching's insane, and it just, like, went home. What happened? Well, our bats shut off is mainly. Like, the pitching was just fine. It, like, I was, I was never going to be worried about the pitching. It was the fucking bats. Yeah, the bats weren't there. It was like, you got to hold them. Yelich completely forgot how to look at a, fo- at a baseball. Yeah. Uh, this fucking MVP, pos- like, three could have been three times in a row. He, he, he won the Triple Crown in one year. Just suddenly fucking disappears. Like but Astro bats suddenly woke up against the Sox. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I it's but, too soon. It's too soon. Anyway, go Strohs. I'm a I'm a temporary Astro fan right now. Every about hour, a carnival barker comes on my television and says, "Hey guys, right now on Fox Sports Bets, you can put ten bucks in, win fifty if Jordan Alvarez hits a home run." I'm like, "What the fuck is happening? Why am I being advertised oh. sports betting?" Oh, the fuck! When did this happen? The, the the prop bets and the parlays that they're that they have going right now. There's like a little mini game going on in Discord. I think it's is it Doctor Dark Match? Doctor Dark Match, aka the worst parlay better. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, buddy. Um, clip like, that. <laughs> like clip that. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, like it, it, it's it's what it was is they they laxed the uh, the the gambling laws. Uh, right Not around. In the- the, f- the free state of Texas can't bet on sports here. Gotta gotta keep us safe from the evil, the the gamblers and and the horrors and the chicken houses here in Texas. Oh, God damn it! I want to bet on sports so bad, stupid fucking Texas. I could be, and, and I'm gonna go a little like <laughs> we're rantcast. It's still rantcast right now. We haven't it's rantcast, baby. Um, like like I. I'm gonna go a little, little, little uh, theologian on everyone this evening, and I hope you're all enjoying a nice glass of wine. You've got, you've got, you know, you, you've. I'm enjoying my screwball. You've had your screwball going, whatever it is, um, and I could be wrong, okay, about everything. You know, I, I mentioned that I'm, I'm kind of agnostic. I'm non-judgmental. Believe what you believe. 
you know, um, whatever. You know, I, I don't harsh people's mellow as a rule. But I could be wrong. I will be standing at the gates of hell in hopefully at like age 100, uh, which is what I told my son I would live to. So age 100, I finally kick it. And I'm standing at the gates of hell. And I have had it wrong the whole time about like, you know, maximum freedom for the most amount of people, legalizing prostitution and gambling and decriminalizing drugs and stuff like that. And if I have been wrong this whole time, my bad, see you in hell, Satan. But <laughs> yeah. But I think morality is more, like, is, is, is a lot, one, obviously it's more complex. We've had religions and philosophers and all, all sorts of humanitarians discussing morality for, for, for all of time, but I take a sort of egalitarian look at freedoms, and I just believe that the most possible freedom that the most possible people can have is the most moral. Yeah, that's kind of what you're, I basically believe. And you're, you're telling me I can have scratch offs. Yes, I can have pull tabs, Powerball. Super fun. Yeah. I can have loot boxes. I can have all this shit. But hey, buddy, don't bet on the Cowboys this weekend. Well, loot. Loot boxes Don't are amoral, but that's because they're advertised towards children. Of course, and of that's course. different. Um, yeah, but and, uh, I'm saying that's no no one's batting an eye at that. But can't can't bet on the Tyson Fury fight. Can't have that. <laughs> Regardless of who is right, there will be a lot of surprise people that back the wrong horse and whatever punishing underworld afterlife you believe in. Well, this is where the. Uh, this is where my, my sort of, like, more spiritual side comes out, which is I think that it has a lot to do with, with finding a truth for yourself and adhering to that. Because what God would punish you for trying to be mostly a, mostly a radical good person, you know? Like, to the best of your ability at all times and finding your own sort of personal truth and trying to live through that. That would be kind of a shitty God if they're like, no, no, sorry, uh, you were born... In uh, you were born on this fucking island in the middle of nowhere that's never known a Christian tome. Hell, yeah. sorry, rules right here. Go straight to hell. Yeah. Like, okay, wow, like that's cool. You didn't go out of your way to find out that I sent my only son here. Yeah, Asshole. yeah. Get to hell. Be straight to hell with you. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't like to adhere to, to a doctrine that preaches shit like that or all the unti unbaptized babies that are just fucking like chilling in purgatory right now that, that's, yeah. that's not righteous to me no, I, I am, I'm purely in the camp of I don't know and frankly I don't want to know rules is written go to hell yeah that's right <laughs> rules is written, yeah, rules so, is written go to hell yeah, it's, it's right there right there we printed it in a thousand languages what the fuck do you want no FAQs it's perfect the first time <laughs> no there have been FAQs that's what Mormonism is right like the gold uh, tablets that, no that was, <laughs> that was when a couple of the writers broke off they made their own little skirmish game that you know it was cute and uh there's a big tournament scene for it but there was that missionary that tried to bring jesus to one of the all oh, the indigenous tribes had zero contact with they could do that hail of arrows oh yeah, yeah that uh that was that island off of india that has like a tribe of straight up like it, it probably sounds bad to say savages, but literally they will kill you on sight. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. fucking around. Get here, get dead. I'm waiting on the winter FAQ for the Bible. Like yeah. again, I I don't like I know uh, Molly is is Christian. Our kids are baptized and stuff like that. The the reason uh, we get along is same because situation. What's that? With same situation. My wife's very Christian. We we joke because we love. We're certainly not yeah. here. The amazing atheist going like, ah, you idiot Christian. No, I, I, I don't. I don't like. I don't like that. I always say that the reason yeah. I, I hesitate to call myself an atheist is because I'm not a big enough asshole. No, <laughs> like, I just. I I don't know. That's I'm not. I'm, a, I'm not as committed to being right. I don't, care to, I don't care to know about the unknowable. You know, like yeah. like maybe it, maybe it's a fucking alien with a light switch. I don't know. That could be cool. Like, it's the dog in the control lab. Yeah, like yeah, Hill. yeah. Like in Silent Hill, exactly. Yeah. Does it really, really matter? New Testament is the FAQ. That is correct, Kicker. New <laughs> Testament was yeah. the FAQ to you know, it was a good base game as the Old Testament. You know, Deuteronomy tells you how to to properly dig a latrine and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And then we had to get some we had to get some content. That mm -hmm. initial one was a little light on content. Yeah, a little light. Yeah, a little light on content. Yeah, yeah. I. I I, I wish they would have went for, a, like, a full revision instead of just a patchwork to the old rules, though. I mean, something a little bit more... I mean, it modern. takes so long to develop the base that you have to just build on the skeleton, at least. 
because if you just develop every time, like development hell happens, and yeah, you, get, yeah. You, you just get some some messed up shit. And if you just let it bake too long, you get like cyberpunk. So we got this runaway me- metaphor right now. I gotta I gotta go one more. I gotta go one bridge too far yet. Sure. So does this mean oh, like God. like Satan was like the dude who tried to like branch off and make his own game? He's like, fuck those guys. <laughs> I'm gonna make my own yeah, game in my right. mom's basement. Satan's like that, uh, like that C- Steve Wozniak character who like helped out the whole time, mm. and then just decides like, fuck this. I'm just gonna make. I'm gonna help kids learn how to use computers. <laughs> you guys keep fucking around. No. Because like he's a bad guy, but he punishes <laughs> bad guys. Like, all right. Yeah, I. Sure. I, I you know, the, <laughs> The New Testament's pretty cool. I'm I'm a big fan of the, of the Jesus meta, you know. Uh, but like, you gotta be, come on. Like the Old Testament, like the first edition, slapped so much harder. There's all the plagues and shit. Oh, like, way yeah. more hardcore game. Yeah. Way more difficult New, to play. New a Testament. lot harder to get through the content. Like the New Testament's a lot of exposition. It's a lot of talking. A lot of walking around and magic tricks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And and Old Testament was about like guess what these people are salt boom and <laughs> I'm just gonna drop a comment on this place kablam like there was a lot of great big action set pieces that really <laughs> defined the genre for a long time. Christ meta op. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean Christ meta was super op and like so much of it like Muslims were like yeah Christ meta Christ meta still works. Yeah. Yeah. But like we're gonna we're gonna add some more to this game. Yeah, yeah. Judas Judas uh, Judas game plus is the secret hardcore mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little known. You have to you have to do a, a certain number of uh, button selections on the the starting menu, and you can unlock Judas. And it's yeah. a short game. It's cute. Yeah. Uh, and like it has a dark ending. Uh, like it was, they went bold with that ending. Certainly the boldest they go in that book. Yeah. <laughs> Samson's weapon was a fucking donkey's jawbone. That's metal. Samson slapped. Yeah, Samson slapped. Jesus OP though. I mean, seriously. Um, yeah. Muslim and Christian DLC caused quite a divide in the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where it really split, and it really the community hasn't recovered. And oh, it's still, it's still a mess. Oh my god. It's, so uh, like this... <laughs> Go ahead. When you when you write a rule like Jesus comes back on a three plus. Like, what do you expect to happen? Full wounds on a 3+, plus every time he dies? Like, how are you supposed to get him off the board? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't mean to, to perform a bunch of sacrilege here and insult people's, like, <laughs> beliefs, but... All in jest. All uh, in jest. Yeah. yeah I'm, this, we, this, we uh, this VOD, we... when it hits YouTube, is so getting pulled. <laughs> yeah. Demonetized. Yeah. No, I, I'm a, oh, wait, I'm only no, like uh, 70, 70 subs from from full monetization. I did get a community page, and I have one of two. Th- you're supposed to get your community page at a thousand subs, mm-hmm. and I have one of two thoughts on this. Either YouTube literally saw how much I post on Twitter, and was like, "Yo, we need some of that," or uh, the community page is out of sync with the uh, monetization uh, sort of algorithm. And it, it goes off of to- one goes off of like total weird. current subs, and one went off of like like one went off gross, one went off net type thing. Because I I bet you with the amount of people who have unsubbed to my content, I probably hit a thousand. Probably. Apparently, Travis says you have your sixty nine subs away. Nice, nice. Okay, and and ready. And here's where you cut back in for the vod. Got it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Monetized. Yeah. So. Uh, I swiftly moved on from the peanut butter whiskey because I downed that. That was delicious. And moved on to my friend here, uh, Sandeman Founder Reserves Ruby Porto. If you've not gotten on the port train, this oh is how you become an adult. Right here. When you start ending your nights with a nice little schnifter of port is when you've officially hit dad gaming. And like I... The light's blowing me out, but I have my, my sweet Dead of War shirt on right now. Nice. And uh, if you have not played God of War, get it on PC. Get it however you can. The game's the fucking shit. Right, <laughs> Stop so I, procrastinating. It's the shit. So so I gave myself a little bit of a healthy pour of port. Yes. I, I, I usually do. Like, I'm, I barely have any in this because I'm going to sip the shit out of this for a while. I've got a, I've got a healthy pour. Like I said, this, is a, this is real healthy. This is like drinking syrup, by the way. Port is... 
Well, I guess, so first of all, I went with the Sandman Old Tawny Port. I went with the 10-year. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I couldn't find the one you had, and uh, right. I wanted to stay in the same realm. And I thought we'd have a good talking point for what the difference is between your Ruby Port, my little 10-year Old Tawny here. Uh, and yeah, what I mean, is Port just... in general? Port I know that, like, is... Brit British people... Like, old, stuffy British people really love port, apparently. Yeah, your ports, your brandies, and your cavassiers, and all that shit. No. Uh, a port is another one of those brilliant, happy accidents for alcohol. Much like beer, the first time some idiot drank the water at the bottom of a hay bale and discovered that that shit slaps. A uh, port was, they put a bunch of wine on a ship, and the ship went off uh, out of Portugal. Portugal. And it uh, it had to turn back. And when it came back, they had all these barrels of wine on there, and they tried them, and they were like, what the fuck? This is, like, really good. Mm -hmm. Let's let's start aging our shit in barrels on ships. And so, sure enough, they, they got around to making this port, and it's partly from uh, Portugal for Porto, and it's also because doing it on the ships, you were always around ports. So this is a perfect uh, finishing uh, alcohol. Usually when you're at like a nice steak restaurant, they bring out the dessert menu and it has your coffees, your desserts, and it has your like root uh, ports and brandies on there. This would also be where your ice vines would be. Yes, uh, because it's very similar. It's, it's more viscous than wine. It's going to have a lot thicker mouthfeel. Mm, thick. Uh, and it's 20% alcohol. mouthfeel. Uh, ports live in a fun category like Texas. It's legal. It's illegal to sell spirits in grocery stores. I can't buy whiskey at a grocery store. That's going to be weird for some people in America. But Texas, anything above 17% alcohol or a distilled alcohol like spirit can't be sold. Except for this guy, Port. You can sell him Monday through Saturday, no Sundays because, you know. All right. Uh, 20% alcohol. It's going to be much thicker than wine. And it's like, I don't know about you, but I'm going to jump the gun a little bit and say Raisins. that the first smell is just like this big jam. And you can just smell the fruit immediately. Like it's this pungent fruit. Always reminds and, me of and, raisins. And jelly. And like the tawny is probably going to be a little browner than, the, than this ruby one is. So we're going to have slightly different yeah. taste. But it's not going to be crazy far out. But you just take this little tiny sip, and it's enough to, it's, it's the equivalent of a mouthful of wine. Just fills the space instantly, big flavor, big jammy punch, and you just sip on it for an hour. Well, and that's how you finish your steak. Ports for, um, it's interesting because ports are higher, they tend to be a higher ABV. This one I'm sitting on is a 20, 20%. Yeah, mine um, too. But they're, it's, they're sweet. Usually, you don't keep a bunch of sweetness as you ferment, and you know because the, the sugars are what being uh, being fermented. So you said they they age them on ships. Is that still the current process? Do they literally put it, send a boat oh, out to sea? And... Uh, I'm sure some people like to play around with it, but the production's too high to where that would be an impossibility. So they've they've found some other ways to turn this. This is also a, a fortified wine, so you kind of you you dump it back in on itself. You add alcohol to it. To, to punch it up. There, there's a bunch of different ways you get things that are technically classified as ports. And of course, uh, the the next step up is brandy, which is a spirit that is distilled out of wine. Wine, yeah. You re, you re, uh, uh, so Wisconsin happens. So uh, you're welcome, uh, world. We're the highest consumers of brandy in the world uh, by a large amount because we drink it year-round. I don't know why, Wisconsin drinks so much brandy. It's not like we're a particularly great vinting state. We don't have like a bunch of like good wines, but maybe that's why it is. Like we have a vendetta against wine, so we like take a bunch of other people's wines and we ferment it and make brandy. We finally got to it. We haven't said it in a while. We haven't said it since the last episode of Can't Cast. But a good alcohol is all about torture. So you just throw it in some cold barrels and and you you just put it in that big still and you just burn the shit out of it, and uh, you get some great brandy. And what's, yeah, but it, what's really funny is like a if you go to a steak restaurant, you'll have, especially if it's on the higher end, you'll have like a seventy year, a glass of seventy year port will cost you 
you know, $85, $95 a glass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then right next to it, 150-year-old brandy, $45. Mm-hmm. Like, brandy is in such giant production that it, it dwarfs. It's so much easier to make than port, and it's so l- much less regarded than port that the price is so significantly different. Like, 150 years, and it's only worth $40. Every now and then, brandy prices spike, which I know mm-hmm. because I live in Wisconsin, and um, and we're, we like our brandy. We love our brandy old fashions. Um, and I will – it's the supper club culture. If, if anyone wanted to know why brandy in Wisconsin, uh, ha-ha jokes about wine and, you know, hating it and wanting to torture it. But also it's the supper club mentality. Like, it's just yeah. – with, like, the only fucking people that have those, god damn it. Um, and uh, – yeah. go ahead. Oh, oh, I was going to say, if, if you, like, with that, that mentality, it's like, if you want to feel like uh, a, a, an aristocrat – just like a steak, cigar, glass of port, you're all set. Like yep. that is how you feel like John Wayne in the fifties. Yeah. And live your best life. Well, I also think we um it has something to do with prohibition. So everyone knows like Chicago was like a huge bootlegging area. Do you want to know where they stored all the alcohol? Uh in during Prohibition? Wisconsin. In Wis in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. All like they stored it all up here, and I would guess that has something to do with, with brandy because if they're storing the the wine and they sort of uh, uh, accidentally fermented it a second time, and you had some old stores that that were never retrieved because the uh, bootleggers would get would get uh, caught or mm-hmm. or whatever. I'm that would be my like tinfoil hat. Well, and and because it was the drug trade, you wanted to make as high proof of alcohol as possible, and then you cut it and sell the cuts so that's how moonshine became so popular because you make it fucking jet fuel and then you cut it a bunch cut it a bunch and then you sell it in your little speakeasy mixed drinks with a little spritzer and and that's how you get away with it uh, and and maximize that profit by splitting it and then once it became legal those alcohol values plummeted because there there's no reason to split yeah yeah milwaukee yeah exactly well no exactly um what like uh uh the the big Capone himself got into a massive shootout up here um uh, was kind of the one that sent him on on the almost being caught track but uh he got caught for tax evasion or whatever in the end <laughs> and died in a hospital from syphilis big brother always finds a way That's almost, yeah well if they want you they'll get you uh madeira so what is a, a port versus a madeira Oh, this is where we're kind of reaching the fringe of my expertise. Uh, I mean, I know most of my Madeiras as cooking wines. Certainly the most of them I've sold are for cooking purposes. Lots of Italian dishes and sauces require Madeira. Uh, but that's that's kind of the edge of my knowledge for uh, Madeira. Um, Ever had medical-grade ethanol? It's a horrible way to get drunk. You're correct, because you will go blind if you drink it. Well, and they... Well, they also Your eyes poison will turn it. the fuck off. Well, they poison it. Yes, Medical they, they poison it. Poison. And if, if for some reason you have the the non poisoned uh, ethanol, yeah, don't fucking drink that. That's very bad for you. Yeah. There's a part of the still when they're making spirits, and that very top is basically jet fuel that will just kill your ass. So do, there there's a reason that people don't sell alcohol above a certain percentage. Some of it is for the laws. Those laws were built to stop from people dying. (laughs) There's an alcohol value that is too high. Like, there's this great documentary about people who make alcohol out of bananas in, uh, I can't remember the African country it was. It was these people who would take bananas and distill them locally. They'd have, like, the local, basically, medicine woman would create these giant vats of banana liquor. And those things were dangerously like the alcohol problem it, it it's a weird thing with the colonies of europe and tanzania europe. Tan, tanzania is that where you looked it up yep perfect okay tanzania, banana wine is made commercially these, by fermenting blah, blah, blah. they 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 have a severe alcohol problem like the, the uk right now is going through a severe alcohol problem as far as like they had to install price floors russia they had to install price floors from alcohol being so not like they can't let it go below a certain amount price wise because people are just 
drinking themselves to death in these countries. So uh, a lot of these regulations are, you know, morality based, but a, a, even more so is just to protect the, the the susceptible from themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and th this comes back to something I was saying earlier about most freedoms and stuff. Like, I do think science has something to say for morality. You know, like, not that science can distill what morality is, but science no. can, like, weigh in on morality. And if you yeah. look at, like, I don't know, like, a mortality rate from alcohol, you, you can distill some, you know, people being alive is generally considered a good thing for a number of reasons and also considered moral. Life is, you know, like, it's preserving life is considered moral and so there is an intersection between science and morality i think it, it, you know yeah. some people disagree yeah, and where that morality meets public safety as well of exactly like, okay, we're, we're okay with alcohol but we shouldn't have it to a point because it's going to kill people <laughs> right and that and that's exactly it is that that cross-section between public health and you know what you know maybe it's a little silly to not sell it on sunday but then if you have a public health crisis then you need to i have it. an excellent excuse for that for texas Okay. And I will defend no selling no spirits because we can't sell spirits in grocery stores, so we only have package stores. That's another thing that's probably Weird. foreign to people who don't have liquor stores because you just go to Kroger and buy your shit. Uh, our liquor stores have all of our spirits. And so the – the I, I, I won't say it's quite a smooth brain opinion, but it's like, oh, well, that's because we want people to go to church on Sunday and they don't buy alcohol. Mostly bullshit but kind of true considering the fact we can't buy beer until noon on Sunday. Eh. That changed to 10, 10 a.m. though on September. So we actually got that law pushed back a little bit. Yeah, so you can go to church and uh, pick up your six-pack on the way back. Yeah, exactly. So there was a little bit of that, but also because you can only buy it in liquor stores, and most of these liquor stores are independently run, that's the only day off they get per week is Sunday. Hmm. Most of these guys are running their own liquor stores. It's the only day they get to close and enjoy a day to themselves. I'm going to go full lefty here, everyone. I'm sorry. But I, 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 I actually do think there's something to be said. Speaking of morality, our need to constantly consume and have stuff all the time, and I want to be able to go to the store on the weekends and so on and so on and so forth. I think culturally speaking, we need to like step back from that, especially yeah. in the Internet age, and yeah. maybe start thinking of a five-day work week again as like a real mm -hmm. thing for everything else. I know, like, yeah. small businesses is like, you know, picnic, picnic. But if people have more money to spend at your small businesses and more free time, then you can offload that. This this notion of, like, having a workforce going seven days a week, I kind of, like, automation was supposed to serve the people. Yeah, and, and big, big shout out to Travis here. Like, the fact that I can go to the grocery store on Thanksgiving Day is bullshit. Those stores should be fucking closed. Maybe, maybe I'm Fuck old. Yeah. you if yeah. you didn't get your shit. Yeah, so maybe I'm getting the yourself. olds now. Maybe I'm a curmudgeon. In my day, we were closed on Thanksgiving. I yes. And the TVs used to shut off at 11 p.m. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, Lord, Lord will, like, sun, you know, like, closed on Sundays for, for workers taking a day off reasons. I, like, like, maybe there's something to that in general with industry. You know, like, maybe... Given people like at least one fucking day back for their lives. Uh, the last two years of my life are the first time I've ever had a full weekend. Like I was commissioned salesman on the street. I worked Monday through Friday to make sure my shit went out. And then for the Monday trucks, I would work about six hours on Sunday writing Walgreens and CVS orders and little bullshit for Monday. And then once I got this nice office job where the office was hard closed Saturday and Sunday, I got a weekend back. I was working six days a week pretty consistently for about eight and a half years. Yeah. And, man, having a full weekend, I I don't know if I could ever go back. Hmm. I don't know how you go back. No. Like once that toothpaste is out of the... The, the tube? Yeah, you can't put it back tube. in. Yeah, I like when my local place is closer, closer holidays. I think there's something to be said for, like, a community coming back to it, too. Recognizing... That, like, okay, the local places have to close on Sundays, but, like, the big grocers don't. And so maybe making it a point to shop at the ones that have to close on Sundays more, you know? Yeah, like, L don't reward those stores that are open on the holidays. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, that's just a grassroots community take that yeah. I have. Um, yeah, so, you have you know. to be like, okay, it's, it's Christmas Day. I'm not going to go to a store today. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Leisure... 
leisure, holiday, ritual, these things are super important to, like, humankind. They're, they're actually, you know, like, scientifically proven to be necessary. This is, most countries have figured out the importance of leisure time and have a lot more vacation than we do. Like, the American worker is basically the most efficient worker on the planet right now, and we're not seeing any of the rewards to our efficiency that we were promised. Higher wages. Oh, I don't, we're, we're, we're certainly the longest working. I don't even think we're efficient at this. No, point. we're efficient. We've, we've, uh, really? My data could be out. Could be out. Uh, could be wrong by like two years, but then it would have dropped off in the last two years. Efficiency wise, we're we're one of the most efficient. Efficient as well. We work a ton, and we have the longest work weeks of any of the developed nations at like thirty five point two yes. hours. Um, and keep in mind that, you know, that's taking into account people who are retired and working part-time because they have to work sub-30 sub hours to maintain to, to their uh, social, social security. Because if they go above, <laughs> then they don't get their social security. So keeping mm -hmm. in mind that, like, that is skewed down because of the constraints we placed on social security. Um, like, the people who are retire retirement age and working part-time jobs that shouldn't be are driving that number down. It's probably closer to, uh, by other estimates, about 42 hours. Here, here's the reason I still work. Because with my job, which pays nicely, I have a nice middle manager salary now, uh, and I have nice medical insurance provided by an employer. I went to the hospital four weeks ago because left arm was tingling, had severe chest pain. I was like, oh, somebody's going to tell me what the fuck's happening. Because my doctor kind of fluffed it off. Hey, you're in your 30s. Like, my sister, who was 34, just had a stroke. She's doing great now, by the way. She's awesome. really recovering well. Awesome. Uh, continue to update on to Kentcast. Cheers to that. Oh, cheers. Uh, cheers. Uh, but I was like, I'm either having a heart attack or somebody's got to tell me something. Because I'm not just going to live thinking about it. So I went to an ER, an actual one, not an emergency clinic. And uh, I sat there. They didn't even... Uh, like fully admit me in. They took a couple blood tests. They took a chest x-ray. They said, hey, nothing's wrong, pal. Go home. And that four-hour adventure, post good insurance, was 2,000 American dollars. $2,000. They called me yesterday, the bill collection people, and were like, hey, buddy, uh, when are you going to pay that? I was like, well, hey, how about this? I'll pay you one shot. Because if you don't know to do this, uh, negotiate your medical bills. Because they are not set in stone. It's all bullshit. Get with their financial aid people. Work your way down into a payment that you can actually make. I was like, hey, buddy, I could pay 2000 if I felt like it. I have a good job. But fuck that. I had an aspirin and a couple blood tests. That ain't fucking $2,000. So, hey, come on, work work with me here. What can we do? What's a one-shot? Can we do $1,200 in cash today, right now? Let's call it even, buddy. Something. They're like, ah, let me work on it for a second. Uh, instead of $2,058, Jack, uh, how about $2,005? I was like, F 50 bucks? You're going to kick oh, me a fucking uh, uh, a ham sandwich for this fucking medical bill? How about yeah. this? You can wait on the check. Because, spoiler alert, if you have a house, like I own my house, I own my cars, you could just not pay your medical bills. What are they going to do? Repo your EKG? Like, <laughs> what are they going to fucking do? Ruin my credit? I own my house. Who gives a shit? Like, that's the, 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 that's some big dick energy right there. Yeah. Like, the oh, fucking come, pure come capitalist energy. Take I my have my meat. this back, motherfucker. How about that? <laughs> that's amazing. Um, yeah. yeah. They can't garnish my wages. They can't do any of that shit. Amazing. I can pay in my own time. If I told them, hey, I'm going to pay it back a dollar a month, they have to eat that. They have to do whatever I want, but I would like it to get paid. I like my my nice credit score. Yeah, but two thousand dollars for four hours, man. I could spend two thousand dollars so much better. Than that. Oh man, all I could think of all the you could have your seven armies then. I know I could have fourteen armies then. That yeah. would be great. Holy fuck, SJ is based as hell. Agreed, seconded, based and red pilled, like fucking super woke. Yeah, it, it, and uh, this is, it, I don't know if we have any Brits in chat right now. Do not let them take back your health care. This is what that looks like. Australia Four is going through right now, apparently. For $2,000. Yeah. Imagine if I was like, oh, I don't know if I can drive there. I better ambulance. That would have been $4,000. Well, th th one, someone illustrated this point really decently 
uh, to me. How much does an X-ray cost? Just like, like I, you know, how much a box of minis costs right now? If I if I threw out yes. Maw Crusher right now, you'd have a you'd have a ballpark figure. And on on average, the average GW box product is forty five dollars. Okay, how much how much does a how much does a bottle of wine cost? Uh, most of the wine you buy at a grocery store, you're probably sitting at about twelve ninety nine. House in your neighborhood. How's my neighborhood? It's about two hundred. Well. <laughs> Texas housing prices are real fucked right uh, now. I, I, you, don't, I, you don't have to say it because I don't want you to outing. It was but, what it should cost. But you know, right? You know. Yeah. How much the fuck does an X-ray cost? Yeah. Especially after, once you charge one guy $1,000 for an X-ray, you bought the machine, haven't you? How much does an X-ray, how much does an EKG cost? How much, how, like... These fucking uh, I, services. Actually, I know the answer to that just because I've had about three EKGs. You know how much life? an EKG cost for you. A different <laughs> person at the same American. fucking hospital, it'll cost a different fucking amount. Yep. Yeah. Like, it's like shoe sizes. It's like, oh, Nike's 8 is not a Reebok's 8. And, uh, it's and it's, it's fucking garbage. It's a shell game. And they know mm-hmm. it. It's, it's the most garbage system of any system that is garbage that it could be is the health insurance, especially since the end result is people fucking die. They're playing a shell game with people's lives and, and people think this is fine yeah, in the quote unquote greatest country in the world. I can either sit on my very obvious heart attack symptoms, arm tingles, chest pain, feel nauseous, headache. I can say, hey, I'm 31. I have very mild blood pressure problems. I'm probably not having a heart attack and not pay $2,000 and have a low level percentage chance of dying. And that would pay my wife and and daughters $900,000 in life insurance. Maybe I stopped going to the fucking hospital. Well, that's 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 the sad reality I'm at right now. I, I collapse on the side of the fucking road. Is that Monday? No, it was last Jesus. Monday. It was last Monday. Uh, dry heaving. Uh, achievement unlocked. Uh, vomited because I was so stressed out. Um, <laughs> like, fucking... Yeah, it, like, on, I was I, at I work. I that day one, bro. Come on. What was that? <laughs> what took you so long? I know. It, it took me a while. Um, well, because I, 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 uh, I'm very animated and you know, very passionate, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I run pretty, like, you know, calm waters run deep sort of person. Like, where it's... I'm pretty even keeled most of the time at all times. And then just, like, once something does get in my craw, once something does, then it just, it like, it amplifies until it's dealt with. And then I deal with it. And if it's something I can't deal with, it keeps amplifying and amplifying and amplifying. And if it's, like, yep. six things I can't deal with, you yep. know, like, it yeah, takes so much to get happening. to me on, like, a baseline level. It's just the basic amount of fucking, of, like, you will not rustle my jimmies. My jimmies remain unrustled. Mostly, I have a performative anger about me, but that's about the extent of yeah. it. My my family's safe and I can still eat. You ain't bothering me. Yeah, yeah. And so, but this this just this shit that's been piling up for a year in some respects, and just all this stuff came to a head. One Monday at work, I see a text message on my fucking phone, and like I spiral and I fucking spiral and I spiral mm-hmm. and I get out my truck. I start I like I start painting a, a sanitary main out, and I'm just like lining up some manhole covers, and I'm fucking painting. I fucking start getting woozy. You know, like the, the the horizons wobbly and shit, and I I walk over to the side, uh, drop to a knee in the terrace, and I just start fucking hacking and dry heaving, just huge gobs of like saliva coming out, and just like yeah. I'm doubled over, and I'm just there on one knee holding myself up with my paint stick, and just like I was there, I, who who knows how much time, I got back in my truck and like I was having this like fucking breakdown basically, and and like I'm on a main strip of road. So I pull my truck up off around on like a little side street in an alley thing. And I'm just like, I just fucking lose it right there. And I had this like paralysis that came over me where I was like, uh, like every person who's ever said, hey, if you're ever in a bad way, message me. Like all their names started going through my head. I'm like, well, and then I delete it. And then I'm like, or do I make a general Facebook thing and just shout into the void? Because mm-hmm. I need to get rid of my question. Oh, dude. You know, all and, the feels right now. And I'm just like, I need to get rid of this that's going on. And it yeah, was cause your general depression sneaks up and goes like they don't want to hear from you well don't yeah i mean that, that's it them. like who am i i yeah. can't uh, uh, fucking uh, burden yeah. people with this feel. like i can't like i know i'm like this friend is sick right now this this friend is, i haven't heard from it a little bit it's kind of like kind of sus if you just show up out of nowhere like yo dude like 
Things oh, are oh, you're feeling a little blue? They don't care. Don't tell yeah, them. Yeah, it, yeah. So it was just, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. just this, this like, small hell that I was in, and I just, like, and, and this, it, it went to, I, I, I called Joe. First, I sent a text message to my dad, whom I haven't talked to and yep, I don't sure really I have a relationship yeah. with. And I just said, Dad, I'm not doing good. Because we've had, since my grandma died, his mom died he kind of reached out to me about that and like we've had like kind of a talk but it's really like kind of just uh him saying some bullshit and then me kind of like sniping him and then just you know, like i know i know i'm not a good person <laughs> and you're, what a typical son come on <laughs> well like you can't just fucking come back into my life after no. you know a decade. The last conversation I had with you was get a job, is what you said. I, I got done with college. I'm like, Dad, what do I do now? I'm debt. I have no prospects. I went to college because you basically helped me go. But then the first semester in, you just fucking forgot you had a son suddenly. And, like, never heard from you again. I called you up after I got done and, like, hey, Dad, what do I do? And you said, hey, get a job. That's all you said to me. And then we haven't really talked since. And suddenly you're talking to me because your brother died and... And my grandma died, and I'm like, you didn't, where the fuck were you when my mom died eight years ago? Yeah. You know, like, where were you when my grandpa died three months ago? Like, it, it, you know, so I was, yeah, so I was just kind of, like, sniping at him, basically, and then whatever. And so, like, I had that, like, that recent text message from him where I kind of blew up at him because I got drunk. I opened up my phone, saw that he sent a picture of the Arizona horizon saying, like, we did a small <laughs> ceremony for your uncle, and I'm like... And I just, like, fucking teed off on him. <laughs> um, drunk one night, because that's what Mephisto does. Um, and then uh, part of the reason we, me and Giannis Antetokounmpo have this agreement. Um, drunk to... I need a breathalyzer on my fucking phone, by the way. Like, just... Oh, uh, that, yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's not like, it's not the, like I'm not in danger of driving drunk, because it's just... It's too internalized to me to, like... You know, the, the survival instinct is, yeah. like, hyper-tuned. But, like, my blow it burn it down instinct is always overtuned when i'm sober so when i'm drunk it's just like i'm always like one one bad conversation from wanting to burn a bridge with somebody if oh sure i've i've been at the very edge of not giving a fuck yeah, uh, for yeah like, a long time. like you i i i'm out of fucks to buy sell or trade you know i'm just uh it, so yeah it, it, on, a, on a on a sober day and so like you have me had me drunk or whatever. So, I, like, I kind of, like, teed off on my dad the last conversation we had. And then it ended kind of, like, in this weird, like, stalemate where he's like, well, I got to go to work now. And I'm like, I'm like, me too. Have a good day at work. And there's, like, kind of, like, yeah, the last thing we said to each other. That's how the, that's how the healing process starts is this and, little bullshit conversation. Right. And, like I said, and then just this, you know, so, like, fast forward a month. I've just, like, achieving unlocked on the side of the road. And I send my dad a text and I say, I'm not okay. And, uh, and then, uh, and then, you know, he, I, he's at work. He, he's like a, he's a, he's a fucking, uh, technically he's Gen X. He's, he's a old Gen X, uh, cause mm -hmm. he, him and my mom had me young. Um, so, so he's not technically a boomer, but in mentality, he's a, he's a fucking boomer. Um, so yeah, he, he works his, he doesn't have like a phone and whatever that he's just glued to for the notifications on and shit. So like, I'm like, okay, whatever. He'll see that whenever. And then I called Haywo. Because Haywo's known me, it's Sam and Haywo, the two people who have known me the longest, objectively speaking. Um, like, in totality of experience, knowing these people, talking to them, and so on and so forth. I don't have family members that have put in that much time into my existence. You know, oh, I, sure. You know, uh, um, so I call up Haywo, we have a great conversation. It, um, that's where I was reminded that I once beat someone so bad at Magic the Gathering they sold their deck. And I'd totally forgotten about the memory. <laughs> Like you call you know like you, like me and the boys. Oh, you... I, I actually know the exact moment you're talking about because I saw that in chat. I think or on Twitter. So I know. Like, yeah. yeah, I know exactly when you were driving. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, it, chat gang. This is this is why the the the, the, the friendships and platonic love and and you, the the people who your friends who will tell you about that time you beat someone so bad in Magic: The Gathering to like cheer you up or or talk about like you know introducing them to like an awesome port wine and. You know, like shit like that matters. You know, those those bonds matter. Not to get, 
I'm not as bad as Rant Cast 2, by the way, or Decant Cast 2. I'm, I'm fine. Right <laughs> the, now. The, AKA the missing episode. Yeah, the Decant. missing episode. It, the VOD exists here on Twitch. I just haven't exported it to YouTube because I'm not sure where it gets really bad. Too, too hot for YouTube. Yeah, too hot for YouTube. Normally you have to pay for this content. Only fans. Cha, cha, cha. Just like fire all around it. Meth plus. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I, I don't know. It was, it was bad. It's, uh, you're talking about your health problems and stuff like that. And, and, in my mind, I had that moment where, like, I'm like, do I need to go in? Like, I, this whole part of my body is still, like, in a numb sort of, like, bad pain. But because I can feel the anxiety pressure in my chest, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just anxiety. Yeah. I'm yeah. just. Well, with mine, because it, what sucks about cardiovascular disease I'm is, switching off the, the board here. Uh, like, being 31, everyone just goes, yeah, okay, whatever, kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're having a hard time. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, and so you kind of have to self-diagnose yourself because no one will really take the time to look at you. Yeah. And so what I've found is a lot of mine is acid reflux based, a yes. lot of like the chest pain stuff. So I've had to really move off of stuff I like to eat. Peppers and super hot shit is out the window for alcohol, a long time. acid. Well, and like a guy had a, a glass of the Carmen air with dinner and immediately I just felt the bubble up. I was hacking and I was like, oh, okay. like. A lot of it is just acid, and so uh, just had to do a whole diet change there. Blood pressure again. I'm only sensitive to it because my sister. Like I was in the 130s, n nothing, nothing crazy. Like apparently she had spiked at some point in the day of her episode at 280 over 220, Jesus. which is like uh, no wonder a part of her brain exploded. Like yeah. it's fucking insane. Well, I mean, there's there's this greater concern. Uh, let's see if anyone will beat me to quick draw here. Um, there's this, this, nope, Ooh, all right. uh, nope, all right, bot, I got it. Bot spotted, detected, detected, bot destroyed. <laughs> Get wrecked. Uh, I was hoping, I was hoping someone else. No. I do want to become famous, though, so I should have clicked that link. There before. you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least it's a real name this time. Normally it's like just a bunch of numbers, so, so, Die Master, nice. Die Master, 444. Four, four. Yeah, good. Good. That could have been an actual Twitch name. The, the, I, I respect a bot that put some effort into the name. Well, get get wrecked. No, you're fine. Um, no, I, I um, I've I've had like ulcers and acid reflux. So ulcers, I just always have, and so I've I've always kind of had like a diet to deal with. So I know the like acid reflux pain, and I've had those nights where I've woke up like and just hacked like stomach acid into the sink. Yep. Um. And I mostly have to sleep on my left side these night these days now. And <laughs> I know, I know. No fucking fucking dinma. <laughs> that popped me. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> well that. done, dinma. Dinma, real real talk, is one of the, like one of the more intelligent people I've like had just like I know. random nerd conversations with. He won't come with. to Halo's Discord anymore. It makes me sad. Like just just what a. What I'm a breadth then. of eclectic expertise levels that Dinma has. It's just He's kinda... my favorite kind of weird. Interesting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, I'm like, ah, oh, a fellow, a fellow, like, jack of all trades, master of none. You know, respect. Like, you know, way too much about a bunch of subjects, but nothing useful. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> like... Fellow weirdo. One of us. Uh, mm. No, so so this was this was different, and it's like I've had like the money I was like ferreting away for my dental surgery because my, my molars are fucked. Uh, I had fall, fillings; the fillings fell out, and then bad. It's just gotten bad, and yeah. don't I have mean, once once teeth go bad, it's really hard to stop them before they just fall out of your. Yeah, mouth. so it's it's bad. I need to do that, but I had to had to get a fucking lawyer, and that was my money for for yeah. that. So I'm just hoping yeah, that I don't get it, one of those like bad molar infections you hear about, or like. Yeah, it's the American nightmare that our, our foreign friends probably won't understand of just like put, putting putting medical shit on hold because you can't afford it is just depressing. Like, yeah. I have a good job and good insurance, and I have to decide. Like, I was at the dentist, and they're like, "Man, you're grinding your teeth like crazy. We can get you this nice this nice mouthpiece. It'll be four hundred dollars." Oh, I, I've started biting my tongue when I go to sleep now. Yeah, I already and have so hypertension, I like, so I, I, I just tuck I my. I got four hundred dollars for your mouthpiece, man. Mm -hmm. 
I can't. Sorry. I guess my teeth are fucked. Yeah. I mean, I'm an insomniac, so I'm only out for like a couple hours at, at <laughs> yeah, any given night. The, the damage is minimal because I can't sleep. Because I can't sleep. But like, so, but I've <laughs> learned a technique now where I just like, I, I tuck my tongue between my teeth to fucking sleep now. I just wake well, up no, with like I, non marks on the sides of my tongue. Yeah. I, I had to go to Amazon, and now I'm wearing a fucking, like, mouth, a uh, fucking football player mouthpiece to sleep. It's a fucking torture device. It sucks. It's, it's but, like you, know. you said, you, you, have a good, you have a good job. You, you own your home. You own your cars. And it's still, and this is, this is something. And I, I am not pleading poverty here in front of my seven armies of AOS. Please don't misconstrue that. But just like when somebody goes, hey, bro, you're grinding your teeth. It's not a problem you're seeing every day. Uh, here's a mild thing we can fix it with. That'll be four hundred. Like, I, I don't want to spend four hundred dollars on that. Well, I you don't. you didn't you didn't get to a decent place by just throwing four hundred dollars at at pieces of fucking rubber for your teeth. You know. Yeah. Every yeah. fucking four months or whatever. Like two years ago, in one in one weekend, my two thousand sixteen because I was a I was a fucking a madman when I was on the streets. I had a 2016, so this is, we're talking about 2019. I had a 2016 Honda HRV. I drove it 204,000 miles in a two year period uh, for my, my wine route that I had. And it exploded. Like the transmission just, I got this office job three months in, the transmission fell out. Mm. And they're like, this car is two years old, it's brand new. New transmission, six thousand dollars, bro. And I was like, "Well, I already owe too much on this because I had to roll a bad lease into it. You, I guess you can have it pack <laughs> for scraps <laughs> and uh, sell sell me a family van and uh, something off your lot used, and we'll just roll the equity into that, and we'll just get it out the door today. But I, I ain't got six grand to just hand you. That's that car is dead to me. Mm-hmm. And I get home, AC goes out." And I, and we, like two days before, we had just paid off my wife's car with a chunk of cash. All in that four-day period was twenty-one thousand dollars in expenses. What? Well, my mom. And, always, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. And and because we're you know Dave Ramsey's kind of a wacko, but he does know how to get your money right. And because we had enough stored and we were good about it, like we survived that shit. But like that moment sits in my brain all the time of like, yeah, I could drop 2000 on this hospital bill. What happens if fucking car explodes and I got to drop eight tomorrow? Well, that's where we're at. We're, we're exactly, we're on the bubble. We're like exactly on the, on the poverty bubble to where, um, so my kids get, uh, my kids get health insurance. I don't, is out, you know, cause like the age matters and, and Molly and I aren't technically married and it's, it's better to not be right now. Um, for sure. shit like that. Um, and uh, like so, it, like we're we're right on that bubble. Like we don't get food stamps. We don't like even Molly. We like we don't get the food stamps. Like we don't get WIC. We don't get any of that stuff anymore. Right. Um, but like, like we're only there because I work overtime. Like all right. the time, and so like the yeah, overtime you work, you is work what your fucking ass off to stay above right the above the line. bubble. And like I have to, and then one month a year I get laid off, and we get like sixty food stamps. Uh, sixty dollars in food stamps when I get laid off for an entire fucking month, um, but mm-hmm. we 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 save up the money and so like we have like we have savings, but we don't yeah. really have savings. We have a budget for when I get laid off, emergency funds, and then so we have some emergency it. funds. And it's yeah. like, I'm like, you can't afford to just out of nowhere drop a grand on something like it, it, like you can't. And we've we own our house because Molly is a fucking wizard with money and. And that's about it. Like, she is yeah. just, she should have went into business, and she should be, right now, uh, she should be the person who's uh, stealing money from the government for some billionaire right now. Like, that's she's right. a wizard with money. Um, she, she, we, we have such a strict budget. We don't go out of the budget. Like, uh, if it is, it's because I went out of the budget, but she's already fucking, like, like Fibonacci sequence accounted for that. Or DPS of like Beth's bad with money. We have a meth bubble. Yeah, like she's like she knew that I was. She's like I I had a feeling you were going to spend about two hundred twenty dollars this 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 month out of nowhere. Like we went down to Ren Fair, right? And I just like fucking spent. I was just spending and spending and spending. I'm like fuck you. I've worked overtime all summer long. I finally get to go. I finally see a friend after after two years or whatever. Occasionally, 
Yeah. We have to we have to buy a bunch of liquor for no reason and do a podcast. Like fuck it. Yeah. Well, then this. Well, see, this did go outside of her her anticipation for me. She gave me the look, and she's like, "How much did you fucking spend?" And I'm like, "I'm like, I don't know, like, like ninety bucks." And she's like, and she gave me the look, and I'm like, I'm like, you can take it out of the Twitch money, and she's like, "I'm already taking it out of the Twitch money for for this next month," and I'm like take it out of the twitch money the following month <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> so like so my next two months of twitch money are like parlayed <laughs> yeah well yeah you're doing layaway twitch right now basically uh at least i'm i'm filling the liquor cabinet wine cabinet with some good shit hopefully hopefully yeah. hopefully she's liking my selection so far. well tomorrow night we were gonna do a so tomorrow night is the is the uh the meftober marathon the the discord watch party where you got some horror movies coming <laughs> <laughs> CJ, you busta. Here you go. There, Gripa. <laughs> I'm doing my part, he says. <laughs> um, doing my part intensifies. No, I'm at, um, so for a, for a household of four, I'm at 40,000. That's the bubble. Um, yeah. And like, we, my, my, we, we're very hard to keep like we we live very fat. We certainly don't pinch because of the the nice job I have. Uh, mm-hmm. But we certainly keep fifteen thousand just to the side because I mean, w- what happens when the next time Texas freezes over and all my pipes burst in my house mm-hmm. and no one's gonna help me with that shit? <laughs> like I'm I'm just gonna have to eat that. Like there's so many pitfalls in America where it's like, wow, he's making good money. It's like, yeah, I could literally be homeless tomorrow if I was in a hospital. Done. I mean, I mean, that's the thing that sucks is even with your house, you're owning your house, owning your cars. If you end up in the hospital with like, like oh, like a real problem, it could all go yeah. away. Yeah, I, I'm the only one who works. I work enough to keep Sarah at home with the kids, and that's the agreement we've we've worked out of like she wants to be home raising the kids while they're young. I want our kids to have a mother at the house so it works out perfectly for both of us i make enough for both of us to live fine if if i go down and i don't just die and they get the life insurance payout we're fucked well see that's uh, what got me on the tangent before about collapsing on the road wasn't wasn't the the your own like sort of heart fears it was actually the life insurance thing there are days where i real like really think about and not in like my normal suicide ideation thing it's like sure it's like damn it's more profitable for me to just work myself to death and like hope my family gets the life insurance policy. Yeah, just grind, grind yourself into cor- corpse starch and get the sweet $900,000 payout from uh, plat- what I can't remember the uh, pinnacle pin, pin something. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm half a million. You know, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm worth half a million if I die. I'm like, that pays half off the house. Is that- this- Peasant life insurance. Yeah, I have the peasant life insurance here. Um, I'm like, it, like it's it just, do I even should I even go into the hospital? And there's that small part of my fucking brain that goes, yes, but you won't be around to argue with them to make sure your family gets the money because you know they're gonna pull some shit no matter if you die. Like you could die in the presence of police officers from natural causes with a fucking coroner on hand to pronounce it legally to the letter. And they'll still yeah. fucking argue with your family. Oh, sure. Oh, hey, he didn't mark uh, that he smoked on his last uh, doctor's appointment thing. And we, we have evidence that he did smoke. So, <laughs> blam. Get on. The hell he did. He tried cigarettes Ooh. once with his mom's Newports when he was like fucking nine years old and never touched a cigarette since. And and typical with Decantcast. We went from Decantcast 1, where I wasn't smoking, to Decantcast 2, where I was vaping on stream, and Decantcast 3, where I don't do any of that shit anymore. <laughs> Oh, I don't. I, I don't. I've never. Yeah. Oh, but you've evolved. Your yeah. You out smoking. Are you done smoking? Yeah, va- like you're done. Va- vaping will help you quit smoking, kids. So. Oh, it's the nicotine, right? That helps. But then you're also you got to because you got to replace the Actually, affect with a different affect. Mine was um, like every third filter I would put into it would just suck. It would just like shoot fucking hot Ooh. flame liquid down my throat and like burn <laughs> the shit out of my mouth. And I was like. That's not I, how many fucking joke cigarettes I'm going to take? I'm done with it. I'm just done. Fuck it. That's Fine. So I'm just done smoking. So, like, my new quit smoking regimen is I'm going to make packs of cigarettes where a random number of cigarettes are jokes that just explode in your face like a black cat, and you will stop smoking. 
Like it is not that cool or worth well, it. You're, just you're, like, well, this was my break. I'm just gonna burn my mouth. Awesome. You you weaponized operant conditioning. It's yeah. Like... <laughs> negative negative reinforcement. Yeah, just there you punishment. Go. Punishment. But uh, sincerely, CJ gives another ten subs. Thank you so much. And then Dinma. Uh, Throwing in another 10 subs, uh, gifting them out to the community. So thank you so much for both of you. Thank you for appeasing Molly in one month. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Fantastic. How's it going? How's it going, Jared? Welcome welcome to Chat Gang. Is that Mr. BWG? Yeah, that's BWG. That's uh, one of the 015s from the 015 podcast. Yes, Hades, vaping is not safe. And I remind anyone when it comes to alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, <laughs> vaping, there are no free rides in this world. This shit is a low-level poison that our bodies can digest into something nice. If I drink the whole bottle of port, I'd, I'd probably be fine at 20%. If I drink that whole bottle of Fireball, I'd probably be dead. Like I said, I can do screwball in a day. I ta you talked about, like, Sundays off. I, I, Sunday drinking is way better than Saturday drinking. Oh, because sure. Sunday, Sunday drinking, football, I usually start earlier, so yeah. I pass out earlier, and then I like I have just a more like a longer amount of time to metabolize before I have to like get back to the grind. Just take half is a great rule, by the way. That is half high is at, in every occasion I've ever been drunk or high. Half high is always better than full on high, or always better than full on drunk. Like. Where I get to the end of the party and I'm almost sober again? Fuck yeah. I'll take that experience every time. Mm. Blackout drunk sucks. Fuck well, that shit. I, I, I've mastered... Like, I, I'm, I'm such a connoisseur of drinking that I have, like, techniques of drinking. Which is what we t I talked about, like, starting with rumplements. You usually mm -hmm. start with rumplements on the night. You do a shot, maybe two, but then I just drink beer the rest of the night. I'm that, that's a, uh, many things my father taught me too young. Some terrible life advice he's given me. That luckily just worked out for him. Lucky bastard. Uh, was like, hey, bud, get to a party, do three shots, and then just drink a beer the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. And sure enough, that's like the best party advice ever for any college kid. And then, you know, the next line was like, hey, kid, don't do cocaine because it's great. And I go, well, okay, I get that, I guess. <laughs> you mentioned that story. That's like, yeah, it's like oh, you won't stop doing cocaine. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do cocaine because it's awesome. I'm like, oh, you know what? sold them. yeah well i mean that's that's kind of decent no my um my whole thing is like i i drink alcohol but i don't i yes i do caffeine and there's drugs or bloody blah, blah but like people know what i mean when i say colloquially i don't do drugs right like the most people do like um sure alcohol is a drug and caffeine is a drug yeah and, yeah, and, yeah 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 um i don't you don't do a legal substance I, I don't do category one or category category two drugs like um yeah I, I, I don't do them mostly because my my mother was bipolar and she self-medicated with all of the drugs. And, like, I at a very young age, I remember – so this is kind of like your dad doing the don't do cocaine because it's awesome. But I watched my mom do all of the drugs and I was like, yo, nah. But, like, yeah. I also recognized that I, I couldn't be straight edge because I'm just – I'm too neurotic. I'm not – I am not, like, together. You know, I'm, I'm – so I'm a decent person, so and so, but like I'm not a, a bastion of self control and willpower. Okay, like I've already yeah. pre impulse bought the fucking new vampire model. Like it's done. Like I impulsively I have purchased oh, yeah. it you in the future. You didn't need to see the the pose that has the baby dragon. Oh, not even yet. No, they didn't need to double sell me on it. Now I want to buy two because I'm like, well, I really now, like the point. Two is guaranteed. I'm like, I kind of like the point because it's like this this villainous sort of like nonchalant, but the other one's got the baby dragon. I'm like, but I don't want. I, I guess I'm buying two now. Like that, my impulse control is shit. Okay, like it's just it's yeah. not good. Um, it's part of what makes me fun to be around, but it also sucks if you're you know trying to not be a emotional financial wreck that's why we have Giannis. Giannis is our Giannis, strength. yeah Giannis has been Giannis my mantra for life. self control exactly um but so i i recognized like i had to have like advice and i chose alcohol cuz it was the legal one mostly but also the irish thing because there's a whole like mystique it's about it's the legal it. one and you can turn it into an appreciation right yeah it's like I, uh, one of the other things I did to trick myself into drinking less a little bit ago is because you're in that, like, cost efficiency mindset. 
So, like, I drink a lot of hams and a lot of cheap right. beer, but I drink a lot of cheap beer. Because yeah. I, w- I would be sitting there, and I'd be like, well, I could spend $11, $12 on a six-pack, or I can spend $12 on a 30-pack of hams, and I'd drink longer, is the way yeah. I would think of it. Like, the total amount of alcohol I'm getting is, like, way higher with it. But that was a fool's game, because I recognized if I buy the six-pack, I only drink the fucking six-pack, and I enjoy it. Exactly. And you'll probably enjoy it more. Right. And I'll enjoy it. And and so, like, I started doing these little tricks to, like, pad against my, like, budding alcoholism. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, do I buy a good bottle of red wine at 15 bucks, or do I buy four bottles of MD-2020? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you, you, tend to nurse, you tend to nurse the good shit a little bit longer. That's why this shit's dangerous because I'm, I'm already just pouring in the, the next one. Like, yeah, whatever. Oh, I, this is my second glass of port. And, and I feel so awkward because, like, Travis, uh, we, we went to early college together and then he went to, he moved colleges in between years. And so we kind of re met post college and now he works for my company. And, uh, like he he came back and was like, well, I don't drink anything, and I was like, I, I I want to enjoy and like teach him about alcohol, but like I don't want to be the guy who's like, ah, fuck your sobriety, pal. Let's start drinking. Like, it's such a brutal like. Uh, every sentence I have to stop myself of going like, oh, but maybe you just drink a little. It's like I'm not gonna be the other the other voice in your brain. Like you got enough of those happening. Yeah. I'm literally gonna suggest no alcohol to you ever. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. all that. I just, I just I got to reset this. Time. Uh, Travis yeah, ma- made a, re- a reference. This is, this is Tatnip, right? Um, made a Tatnip. reference to yeah. one of the funniest goddamn things I've ever seen, which is the punching myself in the balls until I quit smoking tape. Oh. <laughs> the punching myself in the balls until I'm famous tape for. Oh god. America. Oh, America right there, baby. Oh, yeah. I mean it happened. It was called Jackass and Jackass the movie series. But it did that work. Was... It worked. It worked. Of course it does. Of course it oh, does. Oh, like how many times have I fallen into a YouTube a YouTube like absolute black hole of just watching skaters hit themselves in the balls? Yeah. Or or knockout punches in boxing or MMA. Oh, sure. Yeah. Like like I could watch like if I accidentally like watch like a butterbean like knockout punch I will be watching people get knocked the fuck out all night. Oh, yeah. Like uh, everyone's favorite MTV2 show from back in the day, Scarred, where it's just like a bunch of people getting fucking annihilated and like whoring out their injury for, I'm sure, a hundred dollars. <laughs> like yeah. absolutely no money. Jesus. Uh, uh, dare these people came into our schools and said, "Don't do drugs." And we were like, "What the fuck are drugs?" Oh yeah, Dare was like largely a failure. Like, like Dare, only- Dare was such an ultra failure because they were like, "Hey kids, all of these drugs are the same peg. Uh, heroin and marijuana are the same, so don't do either." And so people did marijuana because it was available, and they were like, "Well, heroin must not be bad." And oh. and oops. And there was a question from Dinma. What was my father's stance on heroin? He did not partake of opioids in particular, but he had the very same, a very similar sales pitch of like, don't do it because people who do heroin just do it for fucking ever. Like, it probably won't kill you, but you will be addicted to it for life. And I mean, that's been my experience with people who I've known who've been heroin addicts or opioid addicts. It, it never goes away. It's every day is like, hey, I won. I didn't do heroin today. And so I, I was like, mm, I don't, I don't even want to have step one with that. So fuck to, it. To to be fair, I I think that life is a lot like that. Like, oh sure. Like I mean, my eating habits are my heroin addiction. Like yeah. I just love fucking cheeseburgers. I go to Whataburger every day. Oh, so I can afford to go to Whataburger every day. Nothing is stopping me from going except my own willpower. It's my it's my drug. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong sugar they recognized it as essentially a fucking drug and uh and abused it in all of our products in america um uh, see, haiti and i are going to be friends because we both love jackass see i knew i knew we could come to a common understanding you know, jackass, i grew up on jackass i love jackass. jackass was fine the the bam i'm not a big fan of but there was the <laughs> one episode of bam where he he like fucked with his parents so hard he found out and it was the best episode uh, if, if everything his, else was shit and his then just sad, that one moment. His sad spiral, especially after poor Ryan Dunn passed away, because I loved Ryan Dunn. Ryan Dunn was my boy. Mm-hmm. 
he was absolutely like my avatar in the Jackass crew, just a guy who barely gave a fuck and was just down for whatever. And he passed away. And like it was right in that time where like Eddie Guerrero died, mm. Benoit died, and then Ryan Dunn died. I was like, cool, all my childhood heroes are just kicking the bucket. And ev- like especially with Benoit and Dunn, because Benoit killed his family, Dunn drunk dry, drunk drove and killed his friend. Everyone was like, well, fuck those people. Those people are no longer good, and you can't, you can't let them be your heroes well, anymore like, well, like, and it's like oh fuck i, I i've well, lost so much of my support well no like i i'm thinking about like I, this is on my mind because of kanye west of all things like yeah, oh well, i just finished that kanye west series from your your fella yeah yeah from signifier yeah oh that was it was so, so good. good go watch signifier's kanye series because i wasn't really around for kanye i like well, hip-hop but like i miss kanye completely well, watch that shit well because kanye was I mean, quite frankly, if you're not black, you're not, like, plugged into everything that, like, you know, like, black pop culture is doing. You sure. just get the sort of, like, sanitized stuff for white people, you know. Are you telling me suburbs in, in Texas didn't get the black culture? Yeah, that's, you that's probably bullshit. you probably didn't get, like, <laughs> like P, you didn't get the Kanye story starting out from Kanye, the producer, wanting no, to be a rapper. I, I joined the I joined the Kanye story, like, at Jesus Walks. <laughs> Was well early, early it. actually though, or early yeah. because that would have been. I the, mean, the first people forget how big Gold Digger and Jesus Walks were. They were humongous. Right. That was pop culture for right. a second. No, but like, like listening to Signifier's episode about Kanye and and how watching this person that you put it in wrestling terms. Oh. Well, it's been right, oh. right with the heel turn, the face turn, and Thank right now he's kind so of in much. a heel turn. You're speaking my language now. Right, and 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 he. Oh man, no, Signifier's fantastic. Um. But, um, well, like, he doesn't, like, he doesn't, he, he doesn't care One that day. you're white in a way that he has to, like, sanitize it for white people. He just, he, he's such on the, like, he, he just talks. And I like that because there's this, if you ever watch, like, black people reacting to, like, racist comedy, where they, like, they're trying not to offend white people watching it. And I'm like, yeah, or, or I, I'm like, I, I grew up, like... I grew up in a biracial family. I know for a fucking fact you have some kind of thoughts on that, and you're not saying them right now. Like, yeah, yeah, or, or like they're even worse. They're going to that like huckster, like li- living up their reaction to to get that reaction out of white people. It's like, oh, this is the reaction they're expecting, right? And like, yeah, yeah, no, I, but so like, that's why Signifier is great because it's just, it's, it, I mean, his authenticity is, is just. It's it, such a wonderful point of view. If you've not seen that, watch that. Watch his episode on the Invincible, uh, Impossible White Man's great. Uh, why white people go towards Edgelord main characters is a great episode. That uh, that whole thesis cannot be said enough. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, we want an, really. an existential crisis right now. Like, we want that anyway I, i'm not that wasn't what i was going to go into I, I was talking about like with benoit like no. and kanye is benoit and because mental health uh plat like platforming mental health and talking about mental health was not in the mainstream when benoit no. uh like lost his shit and killed his family yeah, over and, a long time, a year and a half of mental anguish and torture and brain injury yeah. led him to the point of complete psychotic breakdown where he murdered his child and his wife. And, and everyone was like, ah, fucking Roid Monkey killed his family. Yeah, move on. And and the rest like, of us were just like, this guy is a, it was the third murder victim in this story. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that's the thing is it's tragic. And like Kanye West right now is like essentially in a... For a while there, he was untreated but diagnosed bipolar, which is something that hits close to home for me because my fucking mom and she lost her battle with 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 bipolar disorder. You yeah. know, she's not with us anymore. Uh, from yeah. her, her in her case, like I said, she self medicated with a bunch of stuff. In the end, it was painkillers. Yep. Yeah. Like it was it was it was pain fucking opioids that she could get constantly because she had a chronic back problem and was able to abuse painkillers her whole fucking life until they killed her. Well, luckily, Purdue uh, will never be able to be sued for opioids again, so thank God we fixed that problem. So so that's why my... I've, I've never actually really told that part, so hey, to can't cast. Um, I always allude to my... <laughs> like, people know my mom's dead, but I don't... So, uh, now you know. Inside scoop. Boom. Um, this is the access to can't cast gets you. Um... 
so when I see someone struggling publicly with bipolar disorder and like you're literally watching the the sort of mania flip to the quiet dep and like and watching somebody with that he's a billionaire yeah like, he has unlimited access to everything and when millionaires are rich billionaires basically become here's the key to the city anything can be yours at any moment yeah and he's surrounded by essentially yes men and sycophants at all times like nobody who's gonna try to be like yo dog get some help you know, they like it's 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 tragic. And Benoit, in the ultimate machismo world, the toxic. I, I love wrestling. Okay. Yeah. It, it, fuck. But it. It, at the time when Benoit died, pro wrestling was at its l maybe least healthy, most ever. misogynistic, most toxic, masculine. Like like that was still puppies era. The puppies. Whee! Like women uh, wrestling it, was doing panty brawn panty can, matches. Can you believe shit. there there are people and like it's becoming a, a slight tangent here but like it's becoming a meme now almost to like the the ratings war between aew and and wwe it's like can you imagine people are cheering to pay vince mcmahon money this motherfucker who has killed countless wrestlers he allowed the rape of ashley massaro by the u.s army and told her to get over it he let jimmy snooker get away with murder he sexually assaulted and harassed dozens of women at this point like when when is cancel culture gonna get around to this motherfucker? Be, because cancel culture is not a thing. The oh, the culture war of cancel car culture is a thing. Yes. Like like the 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 discourse of cancel culture is a thing, and the conversations that spawn from it. But cancel culture isn't really a thing. Fucking Cosby's about to do a fucking comeback tour for fuck's sake. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like. Like, it's, it, it's, cancel culture isn't really a thing. Like, like, don't get me wrong, there is a problem with these things that happen where we, like, we, we cancel things and this whole weird discourse that happens. That's a yeah, problem. The, the, the random, the random YouTubers and Twitch stars that don't actually have any power and they get wrecked for pretty minor offenses is where cancel culture falls into trouble. And then there's these giant examples of, like, Vince McMahon should be the like if they have an FBI most wanted list of people who need to get fucking well, and, removed but, but like but lefties there. lefties get played by cancel culture a lot so like right oh, sure. right yeah. when hey, you're screaming about this. cancel look culture look at that guy yeah look like at that guy. yeah and and the, the, so like left lefties get played cuz i think there's some bad faith righties manipulating it and you know there's a genuine angst like right um yes uh, bill cosby is going on tour yeah, uh, he's in the preliminaries, and he teased it in some uh, fucking exit interview with some fucking uh, tabloid or alert, rag. Bill Cosby will sell out every venue he goes to. Yeah, well, I mean that's the that's the made made quote. I I don't like the made man frame terminology because I but I don't know I don't know a, a agendered uh, a proxy for it yet. So yeah, I'll get you, there. You eventually. can use my people's term. I'll allow that. But but yeah, like he's a made man. Like. And and once you're at that status and that at that level, like Vince McMahon, like these these folks, yeah, Louis C.K. didn't lose a dime, no, from his little and no, and, he, and his was like the least of any of these. He well, like one he of the, the less egregious, like positive. masturbating on a phone and and using his position of power yeah. to like essentially force yeah. consent, not He's not to downplay guy. it, but that actually yeah. plays a little bit into one of the one of the points about cancel culture that you could agree with on the right side is like. All of the all the transgressions that get someone canceled are all treated equally as egregious. Yes, and that's kind of a problem. Like, Super but again, problem. but again, it's 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 all fucking cultural culture war crap that like dilutes from like real issues. Like again, in the case of like someone like a Benoit, where like that's a mental health crisis. We need to yeah. be discussing the mental health of it all. Horrible yeah. tragedy. The like, moment Eddie died, he should have been off the road. He should have gone straight to hell. Well, fuck and, Eddie. And he was worked himself. Eddie was his last pillar. Yeah, he and, needed to go find a pillar instead of wrestling because wrestling just spiraled it f faster. I mean, oh, one again, it, it, Eddie died for his push. He, he got as big as he could possibly get, and his body failed him eventually. Like to be to be the best he could be, he jacked himself to the gills. Same with Benoit. And so he died 
Benoit goes on this just like that episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Like I, I thought I had worked through a lot of those feelings for Eddie and Benoit, but like I was crying like a baby. Well, the original for both horseman, of those. right? Like, yeah. Uh, what was that? Benoit was a horseman. No, Benoit was. It wasn't Benoit a horseman. The, in, yes, the, the I mean, he was a he was a horseman in like ninety eight. In the yeah. reboot, the reboot NWO. Yeah, horseman. when, when yeah. Flair came back in 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 ninety eight in WCW, but like yeah. I, I remember when Eddie died crying like a baby in that Raw, and like when Benoit died, I cried like a baby. And then the next day, it was like, oh, you cried for that monster? How dare you? Like this murderous, roid raging machine. Like you're a piece of shit. Benoit's now erased from all history. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not one of those Benoit for Hall of Fame because it's really a complicated issue. And it's their show. They can do whatever the fuck they want. But I- like, I, I think there's he was a victim of the pro wrestling industry. There's a there's a positive discourse that can come from this tragedy. I mean this is this is where the Tyson thing is kind of Yes. You know, I think relevant is cuz Tyson if Tyson had died in his arc around the time Benoit did, he's buried a monster. Oh, if if Tyson died let's say right before he showed up in Hangover. Yeah, exactly. People would remember him as just rapist piece of shit and like I again Mike Tyson, he probably committed that rape. I, I'm not going to have any I, other I don't opinion. have any really doubt. Obviously. Yeah, like, he, he probably did. He was set up to fail his entire life. The fact that we get a normal human who's kind of, like, has, has had his ego shattered through lots of therapy and lots of, you know, mind-expanding drugs uh, is some kind of happy accident because he was born to fail. 13 year old tr- like drug addict criminal on the streets turned into a killing machine who was given the key to the world with all the money on the planet how did he not just kill himself in a lamborghini accident i mean he tried um yeah <laughs> he didn't have a car <laughs> um no i mean i mean there's there's a there's a question in there about like how much compassion do you extend to I, i'm just for lack of it like bad guys villains how much yeah. compassion do you extend for villains, especially in the face of their victims? You know, like in the in the, in the case of Tyson, like how much can you? Because if villains can be redeemed, like how much compassion do you extend them, and how do you give them compassion without, like, quite frankly, hurting the victims more? And when it comes to like people and especially men of power. That's a very difficult question because we oh, often sure. find, as a society, we have a lot more compassion for the fucking the men trying to get better in that scenario. I don't yeah. have the answer. This is something I oh, there, I'm like. There's, there's no answer to that. I mean, I will say, uh, when it comes to Tyson, especially, uh, and this might just be being a father thing, uh, his the the way he lost his daughter is one of those like goddamn. Just stop punishing the guy because i i don't know if i could survive that event personally that sounds my like my own personal absolute ultra punishment of like oh yeah goofy accident your five-year-old daughter's dead like uh, parent bearing your kid is <sighs> probably the worst, worst fate i can think he, of he went he went to jail for his crime he had some very unfortunate things happen to him after the fact well, like, and the fact the, that he's building his brand on like healing and talking and the breakdown of toxic masculinity within himself, and he talks about it like he is redeemed in my eyes. He is well, a person it, who's it, of who in, is in a in a karmic evil. sense, like he's literally suffered the like other shoe, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like you can't suffer much more than that. Like, I won't hear it. So I, I, I don't, I don't know. I. I Again, all all the sympathy and empathy in the world to to his victims. I'm going to put an S on there because the time yeah. you get caught is probably not the only time. Come on, it's like how all of us have probably driven drunk, but not all of us have gotten a ticket. You know, like yeah. like there, you, I I don't know. Um, yeah. And and how bad do you feel for Nagash? You you don't. He's the avatar of death. He's not a bad guy. He's good. He's got this. Hang on, he's, I, I, he's he, a. He's quick. just helping I'm death happen. I'm gonna get Molly and, another drink, and uh, yeah, yeah we're, me and Travis are just gonna talk about uh, uh, Colin Powell. Some. Oh you're... God, please, please don't get me canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Col- Colin Powell and Rush Limbaugh 
and people like this, I'm not going to say anything bad about them because that's that's not a good thing to do. I'm going to say the only good thing I can say about them, and that's that they're dead. So that's all I have to say about those gentlemen. You could have spent all that money on the Iraq War on um, my uh, my medical bills instead of. Uh, ruining half the planet so that's all I gotta say about Mr. Powell and of course he has to be a jerk and, and die of COVID with the COVID vaccine so the, the real dopes can go around and say oh the COVID vaccine doesn't work like it killed Colin Powell like thank, thanks thanks for doing us a solid on the way out They still play, uh, like, they play Rush Limbaugh on the radio? Like, of course I play Rush the band because they're fucking dope, but they do they play, like, Rush replays on the radio? The Lord Whale? Contest winner extraordinaire? How do we feel about the Lord of the Rings TV show coming out? I feel neutral because... The last Lord of the Rings property that came out was not great, so I will I will not hold my breath currently. And not to be taken seriously. If if you can't get a fucking shot, if you can't get a flu shot every year, I mean, the second Moderna shot put me on my ass for like twelve hours. Like suck it up, Buttercup. If if you can healthily get the vaccine and you don't have an actual health reason to not get it, don't don't fuck around. It's not the time. Like we're we're about to. Texas is at like seven percent, and San Antonio itself, where I live, is seventy five percent vaccinated. So it's starting to feel good again. But like, don't don't fuck this up for Christmas. I want to be done with this shit. Yeah, if you if you have a proper Schadenfreude gland like me and Travis do, uh, that's just like. It's in, enlarged to the point of cancer is probably in the side of my brain. Uh, the Herman Cain Awards on Reddit are shocking. And there's new idiots every day who are, who are ready to play the old COVID uh, roulette. Yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a new move, CJ Obusta. He took, took a girl to the last Hobbit movie. Was that like a first date? Let's go to the last Hobbit movie because that's a rough first date. I, I don't know if I would take a girl to a sequel of a fantasy film on a first date. A sequel to a fantasy film on a first date. That's bold, bold strategy, Cotton. Well, that sequel happened to be the last Hobbit movie. That's mm. a brutal date movie. I, I don't know if I would take any girl to see that cold. Like, that's what Pixar movies are for. That's why they release them in certain increments, so there's always one out. And did, you could take a girl to it. Did you did you tackle the uh, how do we feel about a L two R TV show? Did you handle that one yet? Uh oh yeah I I it was pretty quick. Mine is the last Lord of the Rings property they released in a visual medium was pretty meh. So I am neutral. Yeah. It's hard to get excited at when the Hobbit was the last fucking thing they did. And it's Amazon. Like Amazon TV shows are super all over the place. And it's an adaptation, so are they just going to go straight for the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings? Are they going to try something new? Will that new thing not work? You know, I, I'm still trying to stomach back any bile I have for the Cowboy Bebop live action. Like, I'm, I'm trying to go in as slow and slow there as possible. Go. Like, hey, maybe it'll be fun. Let's hope I, for fun. So, so, so here's, here's, <laughs> here's my take. Here, here's my, uh, here's the Marquis take, because I'm the Marquis Mephisto tonight, not. Um, listen. Not the magical Mr. Mephisto. Um, it's not for me. As, no, it's not for us. As, it's as somebody, for it's it's not for. I can't invest or be forced to care enough about it. Um, that being said, uh, Cowboy Bebop, the anime series, is... Okay, so uh, many of you know, this is one of those cases where I won't treat tonight like the first episode for some people. I think most people know where my nickname comes from, where my namesake Mephisto comes from. Uh, the whole story about an anime club, if not, Otaku Cast is scheduled for November, December. Uh, you'll, you're welcome, everybody. Um, I so in in I was in an anime club in college, 
And you had to like, oh, what's your favorite anime? And I said, Cowboy Bebop. And this, the club straight up looked at me and they said, that can't be your favorite anime. This is about like, this was like, not the heyday of Toonami. Like, Toonami had played Dragon Ball Z and that was about it. I had watched Cowboy Bebop on VHS rented from fucking Videoland, okay? Like an OG. Um, <laughs> or I had a bunch of shit for, like, Project Aiko on a VHS but, club. But Cowboy Bebop was not uh, kawaii enough or mm -hmm. not, not anime enough to be anime. That's well, basically just... They, they just basically made a Western noir as an anime. Yeah, on, and, like... And it totally, they totally thought it would fail, which is why they finished it in one season. And even though they mm -hmm. had tons more plot, and like they didn't think it would work, and then it found its audience <laughs> in America, basically. <laughs> CJ with the based best anime. Yeah, and so like, and and so I, like they told me like that's that can't be your favorite anime, so I switched. I'm like, okay, it's Rosafon. Um, yeah, like a monster Masume, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, you know, like I'm fine. It's 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 Rosafon. And, uh, Outlaw Star is or yes, or or Fruity Cootie Out, Outlaw Star also great like um, uh, uh, Space Dandy pretty legit uh, Gurren Logan's up there for me I love Gurren Logan in fact Space Dandy is capital F U N just fun fun it's just fun yeah uh, Do uh, not Gurren watch Logan that show is serious just like enjoy the ride Gurren Logan might be my second favorite by the way um, Big yeah, Rob you know solid Big Robs yo uh, I sat and watched Akira for the first time in like i don't know eight nine years god damn did bruce tim ever make a fortune ripping off that shit or what because mm -hmm. <laughs> watching akira i was like this is just batman the animated series like i can almost see the cells they ripped from this film and turned into batman shit it's yeah. amazing hot take i liked outlaw star better that's fine that's fine outlaw star is a, that's ton a legitimate of hot take that's a legitimate take. i mean it's a legit hot take but like i respect it because yeah, i it's, too it's, it's it's heated, but it's legit. I, I love I love Outlaw Star, mind you. Yeah, you're not like, oh, Hamtaru's better than Cowboy Bebop. And you're like, okay, well. Well, now you're just trolling. Like, I know you're trolling. You don't legit. <laughs> like, Outlaw Star that. was good. Trigun's another one you could say, oh, I like Trigun better. Like, Trigun was, sure. yeah, was fine. fun. Yeah. Uh, so, so anyway, like, Cowboy Bebop, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, when I say the takes I have on the live action, you need to understand this comes from somebody whose favorite anime is, in fact, Cowboy Bebop and always has been. Okay, yeah. it it doesn't for me the the eclecticness it, how it's got like a continuity, like a loose arc, but like the mm -hmm. the arc only like kisses on the main show every now and then is exactly how I still run my RPGs to this day. You have a loose continuity, but then it's a little bit of a monster of the week format, and then every now and then the monster of the week is the continuity. Okay, the, the fact that there's not enough Cowboy Bebop. Like, there's not a complete story. I makes it. Excellent. I'm happy that way, though. Oh, I know. Like, it's torture. Like, nothing would make me happier than the original director to come out and go, guess what, guys? If we're getting a series where Ed's 20 years in the future and it's she's trying to find the Bebop crew. My heart wants it, but my brain's like, it's no. perfect as it is. Yeah, I'll leave it alone. It's right there. Like, if I could go back in time, that 13 more episodes injected throughout to where we didn't get the rushed ending, sure. Like, I yeah, wanted a I mean, little bit more time. The movie was good. The movie was great. Yeah, the movie exactly kind of did that. Like, if you, you know, like, a, like I could stand to have two, three more movies injected throughout the series. Like, I, there's some hanging plots that I would love to see a little bit more of. I want more, more Jet Black backstory. The episode yeah, where he I goes think, back I to his fucking ex-wife. Yeah. Like, mmm. That would be that would be probably the acceptable extension to the universe. It's like, oh, you're, we're we're gonna do eight episodes of Jet Black when he was a cop. Yeah, just just okay. some, more, some more Jet Black, a little bit more Faye Valentine, like just just a, in, infusing a little bit more. That's it. Is I just want more. But like, God damn it, that's the best place to be for art is wanting a little bit more at all times, right? Yeah, like you feel good, you're happy, you're like yes, but you just you want more. I always want that. Don't explain it all. Don't ruin it all. And yeah, so Cowboy have... Bebop for me is is this... Uh, Roroni Kenshin was a banger up to Shishio Saga, and then after that it was, it was garbage. And also, you know, the creator being a pedophile, like, totally ruined it all for me. No no one likes the episode of, or the ending of Bebop. I like That's it. what makes it great. I like it. No, I, I like, unironically the, the, the enjoy it. The fact that it's not some kind of tie-in, you don't even know if Spike dies at the end. That's what, that's what Same, makes it... Same, CJ. The, the the top same cj a hundred percent 
Oh, I, do I? I didn't know how much I wanted it until you said it. Uh, wanting Blood, a wanting a Bloodborne anime, anime is at the top of my wild. list right now. Give me some like Van Helsing vibes, you know, with some fucking Castlevania with uh, as done by like fucking Warren Ellis recently. Give it to me. Mm, Cause, damn, cause I want that now. What you don't want is like Cowboy Bebop guy comes back and does it a couple more times just again, like they did for Evangel uh, Evangelion. Well, it's just like, ah, oh, we're just going to do the show kind of again. With well, the they're, just, they're just milking the cash cow because they know. Yeah. They and, and one thing Cowboy Bebop has not been is milked. That is like the most unmilked well, popular property ever. Well, because Studio Bones had some sense about them and just like kept making good shit. Um, Although it, it did take me till later in life. I didn't realize how much that like I love the Cowboy Bebop music. Waltz for ZZ was played at my wedding. It was my first dance because nice. dork. Uh, I didn't realize oh. how much that chick, oh. she just straight up steals her music. <laughs> well, the, Holy shit. Well, like, or, it's not even close. Or like fucking the, the scene where, where Spike is just falling in slow motion from a grenade explosion. Oh, Green Angel? Yeah. yeah. So fucking yeah. So good. Um, the, the point I was trying to, trying to, trying to make was, um, was like, I love Cowboy Bebop, love it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Can sing nothing but his praise. Um, the live action, you're you're going against something that in my mind is perfect. Yeah, you cannot make a perfect version twice. So the best you can do is a fan, a stylized fan celebration of the yeah. thing. And so if it is just a stylistic celebration of the original thing, that will be a win. If if, if it, it is go ahead. Pacific Rim. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah, just get a new generation to go back and watch the perfect anime. Yes. Like, just if it's get... Death Note, no. <laughs> Yikes. Incorrect. <laughs> if it's Dragon Ball Z Evolution, no. Incorrect. Yeah, no, just, just make a thing that celebrates the first one. Riffs on the first one is just made by fans who love the first uh, first one. And by the first one, I mean the only one is Cowboy Bebop. Just get people yeah. who, like, loved the thing, who want to make yeah. the thing, and then do that. Dragon Ball Z Evolution disqualified. <laughs> I don't even remember it, to be honest. Like, it just... Like, I was never a big Dragon Ball or DBZ fan to begin I mean, with. If you take Dragon Ball Z any kind of serious, like, it's a fucking fireworks display. That's well, it. But the watch, other part of DBZ... Fun fireworks display. The other part of DBZ is he didn't have an editor that time. He had an editor for Dragon Ball. Yeah, and and once you realize that Dragon Ball Z is just pro wrestling, you'll enjoy it more. Oh, Big O was excellent, and oh, also uh, shouts to great. one of the best intros ever. Big O, Big O, Big O, Big O, like so good. <laughs> yeah, like it's literally Dragon Ball Z is uh, you build up a heel by having him beat up a bunch of the baby faces, and then the big baby face beats him in the end through fighting spirit. It's just Japanese pro wrestling. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's cool. Oh, Japan loves wrestling, by the way. Uh, Dinma, oh, yeah. I've never watched the Fist of the North Star live action, but I unironically love the 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 live a Fist of the North Star live action or the Fist of the North Star anime movie from the eighties. Unironically, there's love a Fist it. of the North Star live action. Yeah, apparently I've never seen it. The video game, oh, by the way, was great. actually really solid for like PlayStation Three. Actually, oh, really I remember good. that game. Legit great. A a big O movie would be interesting. It would be fine. Just, just make it like, would be interesting. Who who do you cast as Big O guy? As as the uh, as Bruce Wayne. I mean, yeah, legally distinct Wayne. from Bruce Wayne. You literally I mean, you just, just cast you just Christian Bale. Are, like, Christopher Nolan is right you, there. Yeah, you just you just cast like like pick the best your favorite Bruce Wayne actor, yeah. and that's who you cast. M Michael Keaton as Big O would be pretty. Oh, uh, Michael Keaton. I I look forward to Michael Keaton as Batman again. Or I want a Batman Beyond movie where Michael Keaton plays old old Bruce Wayne and we get like Terry McGinnis from like whoever new hot actor is that can act. Yeah. But the kid from the new Dune movie would be a good. Sure. Terry McGinnis. Sure. That's Terry McGinnis. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. new hot actor man who can act and then like fuck it. Uh, or you change it up just a little bit. You put Michael B. Jordan as Terry McGinnis. Yeah. Fine. Love it. That's cool. Yeah. Do that. Deal. Yeah. He can, he's got, he's got the chops. 
Because, man, uh, how how good is it to just delve into comics now and just go like, man, the MCU, they nailed the shit out of it. And now we can just do what-if TV series with the actual actors voicing the shit. Like, what a weird nerd Except for the big three, yeah. Like, that if if would you be haven't so seen good. What If, What If is just fun. Like, those comics are were. They're just fun. Colin, Colin and I have been watching them, like, every, every couple nights we watch one because, like, we're yeah. going to run out. And so we're like... Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're just, like, enjoying them. And we just finished uh, Zombies. Uh, Dude, the- how did they do Marvel Zombies? How? I was certain. I was like, oh, Disney owns them. There's no way they're going to touch it because those comic books are fucked up. I don't know if you've actually read Marvel oh, Zombies. They're, they're, I don't like the Marvel Zombies comics. They're too cynical. Oh, I don't like them either. They're very mean-spirited. Yeah, very mean-spirited. Kind of exactly. They shit on the whole hero mythos, but, like, there's a lot of fucked up shit in those books. And the fact they did the, like, Black Panther's leg is being eaten, being fed to zombies shit, they took that from the comic books. Like, wow. That's... Well, there, there was enough, like, temple moments, but Disney it wasn't did cynical. This, I can't believe it. It wasn't cynical. That's why I liked it. Yeah, oh, God, and, like, the whole part where, like, Spider-Man, and he goes back to 1950 Spider-Man and just murders all of them, it's like, this, this is, like, did Vince Russo write this? Like, this is yeah. fucking awful. Yeah. Best one was the Doctor Strange one. Actually, I agree. Uh, hard agree. Um, I, I like the question like it Party raised Thor more than the others. Yeah, I like no. Party Thor a lot. What was it? <laughs> Party Thor. I, I, I did like Party Thor. I don't think I've made. I think you're about to get to Party Thor. I, I, if you just yeah, finished Zombies. Party, Thor, Party yeah. Thor's coming up. Uh, yeah. I mean, I liked I liked Captain Britain. That was fun. Captain Britain um, was good. Um, also, okay. So in all the discourse about Captain Britain, oh, sh- sorry, uh, Captain Carter. Uh, in Captain all the discourse Britain. about Captain Carter, nobody once brings up the fact that she wasn't an invalid, for why she's stronger than uh, Steve Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers, yeah. when he gets the super ser- soldier serum, that would in theory make him super is amplifying some like we like below average person's musculature yeah um by i don't know a hundred times right like a hundred times this muscle mass is what happens to steve rogers uh if you do a hundred times someone who is you know like chad agent carter yeah like so so like when she gets the super soldier serum she is uh at least average build and height for for a woman which is more build and height than Steve Rogers when he gets it. So of yeah, he course should, he she should be technically stronger than Steve Rogers. So she would be stronger than than Roger. Uh, why isn't anyone bringing that up? And they're like, you know, people. First off, if you're analyzing what ifs, uh, you're a sad human. Yeah, you're a nerd. But if you're analyzing what ifs and you're just being like, did they just make her stronger? Yeah. Cause girl. Well, to, um, to be fair, you're in for more Agent Carter as. Cap- uh, Captain Carter. So you just put a pin in that until you finish the series because I wasn't expecting it. The whole series like ties up together. Like you build up all these new characters from What If series, and then that What If universe collides. Good. Like I was expecting just a bunch of random one-offs, and it was like, oh, you're actually giving me like a, a whole continuity. continuity? Cool. Uh, oh, dude. Um, uh, I want Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. God, um, only got one movie out of him. What a fucking tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... But, yeah, I want Star-Lord uh, fucking T'Challa. So bad. And, I like, the optimism that comes out of T'Challa's personality being put in there instead of... Like, I like the, the like, Thanos doesn't try to destroy the whole world. Because he just, like, he met... Like a red pill asshole they hang out with. Yeah, like, he's like, just, well, like... They, you know, yeah, actually, like, if we killed half the universe, it'd be pretty sweet, just saying. Yeah, like, he's just some, like, <laughs> some, like internet troll. Uh, yeah. Uh, Look, he just becomes based. <laughs> yeah, like, super based. Like, <laughs> like Well, yeah. luckily for you, you're getting more Chadwick Star-Lord. Good, good. I want more. You're getting um, more Doctor... everything you've seen so far. But, like, like um, which is with Doctor Strange. I like Doctor Strange the best so far just because the the question asked by dr strange is like how far would you go you know to even if you know would would i you mentioned earlier on like tyson's tyson's daughter like if 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 the the worst thing i can think of is is bearing my children as like yeah. i think that that's the worst thing i can think of um if given the opportunity how much how would i destroy the universe that moment in time yeah, like how many times would I try to remake that? How many times would I try to do it? I don't think I would summon a, a million demons into my soul, but I would certainly run rampant with that question for a while. 
and I would try to do it over, and I would relive that moment over and over and over again. If I relived that moment over and over and over again, trying to fix it a thousand times, maybe I'd get to the point where I'd summon a, a thousand demons into my body. Yeah. You know, like, like that's that's the kind of question where I was just like, "Damn, this is what what if is for." Um, the, the rest were just fun thought experiments, and I like fun thought yeah, experiments. And, and that that experiment, I guess, really goes into like if you haven't gotten to that new happy place if you're stuck in that that torture place mm -hmm. and that that morose place like yeah the thousand demons like i remember we we lost our very first pregnancy like super early and it took us a long time to get pregnant with my oldest after the fact and like that was excruciating because my wife was just like uh, am i a viable mother because I lost this first one and now oh, I just can't. Bad. And it took forever. But like now having the two children and loving them to death, like I can't, I'm not going to go back and change that point in time mm. because that would fuck up my time. I like now. So like once you get to that new healing place, like that, that thought experiment leaves, but while you're in the middle of it, absolutely. It's like, Oh yeah, bring the demons. Well, that, that's, see, that's where I'm at in my life right now, like, in, in general, is I, I hit a point where, like, I've had some real bad the whole time. I, did I mention the dream I had to chat? Did I just mention this in an isolation to somebody? I had a dream where I actually uh, went back in time to college and, like, some of the big decisions I made at college time. And I it was one of those, like, pure lucid dream moments where I was in the dream controlling stuff and I knew about my life outside of it but I didn't know my life outside of it was I just had all the awareness of it all and it was like a time travel dream and I was sitting literally sitting there and I'm like well Molly won't be in Milwaukee until this time period and I can like oh yeah 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 and I'm like I can I can fix everything here and and like I I like erased a bad relationship you know because I'm like I already went through like the bad relationship so I'm just not gonna date that girl this time and just like hang out with my bros for a little bit and I'm like, with the whole goal of getting back to being in Milwaukee when I met Molly and worrying that I still wouldn't have the same kids. Oh, yeah. Like, if... Yeah, because what was the exact moment that you guys consummated? Yeah, your right. Kids? When did we conceive? Uh -huh. Like, and, and then, like, in the... the and, and so, like, this whole thing happened where, like, I just, like, all the bad shit I had endured for, like, five-ish years of, like, kind of the worst five years of my life going, like, no, nah, I'm good, I'll take that, as long as I can get here to where I am now. And that's what my yeah. dream did for me, because, like, at the time, mm -hmm. I was, like, looping through these unhealthy headspaces of, like, what-ifs and then and so on and so forth, and then I had this dream, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'd have, like, I'd have totally played the hand, hand the same. I'm like, yeah, I won't do the one bad relationship yeah. and just watch more anime for a little bit, but, like... <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I just want to get back to where I was. In the path, but the path had to be that way. Yeah. We, yeah. we are, we're not allowed to change the path because, like, e even if you knew the exact hour that you conceived the kids you have, if you're off by a, a nanosecond. Oh, my angle's just, wrong? Like, just yeah, the wrong a angle? A different cell hits, and, like, uh, like I'm going to, I might cry just thinking about it, but, like, imagine you're like, okay, I, I did it. I nailed it on the right time, right hour, and then the kid comes out and it looks different, and you're like, mm -hmm. "Well, and that's a different kid." And that other kid now is just like, uh, "What to get?" Like that Superman story, "What to give the man of the future?" Of like, "Oh, that that life just doesn't fucking exist anymore." Bye. And you're the only one who gets to know about it. Yeah, but like, but see, my time travel scenario, Jared, I already had the all the bad experiences from that relationship, so I don't I don't. In my right. in the time travel this dream, this would be this brain going back in time. Yeah, this brain's got it. I'm like, no, I got the trauma from that shit. So I'm just gonna watch some more anime. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't have to date that bipolar girl in college, and and she really fucks up my my relationship. It was it was borderline personality disorder. Uh, we didn't know it, you and we discovered it together. And I'm like, insane. and that was the like literally like, oh shit, I'm dating my mom kind of thing. And I'm like. You know, yeah. and like, and she brought out the worst in me, and I wasn't sympathetic to her because I got this resentment of like that I had towards my mom carried over. And we were not good for each other. She needed someone that was not me, and it was just a bad relationship. And and yeah. that's the thing is like, 
you know, this is this is where like lefties fight or righties fight, blah blah blah. But like lefties fight, and you're like, why do these two lefties fighting each other on Twitter? I'm like, oh, they just don't. They literally just don't get along. They're just, you know, like you're like you can have all the same like general beliefs on yeah. shit, and still just not jive with someone for personality issues. They said one thing one fucking time, and it rubs you the wrong way, and you will never see them in the same way again, and you can't go back and fix that. And that's the thing about the time travel dream is, like, my brain had already, like, experienced a bad relationship, and I've already evolved to the person I became. And knowing that I was a piece of shit, I'm like, yeah. I got it. I'm a piece of shit. I'm like, we're good. Just, you know. And then just, like, again. I don't need to learn that life lesson twice. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to go through that two times and then, like, ruin her twice or be more sympathetic and then she becomes more co codependent with me. You know, because, like, I'm not a shit person to her this time around. Because I get what's going on, and like, and then the diagnosis of bipolar, ha or not bipolar, uh, uh, borderline personality disorder happens like later on in our relationship, and then like I uh, feel like garbage, and then but by that time it's too late, and we've already kind of like burned a bunch of the connections between us. I'm like, yeah, I don't need to do that again, and I don't need to put her through that trauma. So like, maybe give her a call. Hey, it's borderline personality disorder. This is scream guy, scream voice, and then like I hang up on her, and then like, and that was it. But Don't like, get help. Yeah. <laughs> Borderline personality disorder. You'll thank me later. Like, yeah, yeah I, I don't Google know. that shit. Wait, what's Google? Uh, is that too early in this timeline? Shit. <laughs> no, uh, I G think I had a Gmail. I had a Gmail then. I had a Gmail then. Yeah. <laughs> Hit up Yahoo and uh, <laughs> look up multiple personalities. Uh, Hades, Hades with a two-parter here. Uh, pregnant on an accident more than on purpose. That's basically a hundred percent of the time because, again, in that year we timed every fucking cycle to the minute especially at the end is if if a body doesn't want to get pregnant god damn it's hard to to make it happen and like it, through pure spite she she got pregnant before we started like looking for help and then once we got through stella they were like oh your hormones are crazy so let's put you on this hor hormone uh treatment and literally hormone treatment the next week she was pregnant with my second kid. Like, <laughs> like if, you're, if your mojo is just a little bit off, it just doesn't work. So, yeah, like 99.9% .9 of all children are accidents. Just too hard to plan. Well, it's, it's not even that. It's, it's that, like, uh, life is difficult to exist. And life so it, finds a way. Yeah, life finds a way, right, yeah. And oh. then uh, yeah, how, how are we so fucking similar? Uh, the more you grow up, Hades, and the more you talk to people, and the more you listen to their stories, we're all very similar. True Especially in, in your home countries or in the same uh, cis male uh, you know, economic bracket kind of, uh, of life. We all had very similar cards, and we all played them somewhat similarly. Well, That's how we got here. I, I'd imagine, game. yeah. If if you're if you're watching this right now, you probably, I mean, it, I I don't try to do the lowest common denominator style fucking show. Obviously, we're, it's we're, not a hot take. Yeah. yeah, no, this isn't hot takes. This isn't clickbait titles. I do do clickbait uh, thumbnails, but only because they're funny. Like it's it's yeah. it's funny to me. But if you're hot, it, hot take, wine is good. Yeah, wine's great. Um, I, I'm not an outrage merchant. I, I don't even really talk about AOS that much these days. Like I, I kind of do. Um, I'm told by two patrons specifically this is the best content I've made in these last three months. So, I've, I've been on it twice. I'm telling you. Yeah, that's what it is. That that's it <laughs> algorithm, right baby. Nothing about this shirt is the lowest common denominator. Thank you. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Look at the sophistication. Look how low that neckline is. It's yeah. Kind of it's only gotten, like, lower since because it got looser, <laughs> like, as the show's gone on. Um, of all the man's invention, alcohol is the greatest. Well. It saved our species. Well, no. Like, was, evolutionarily beer was safer speaking. safer than water. Yeah, evolutionary. Yeah, it's, it's safer than water. And evolutionarily speaking, it pulled us out of the trees. Like it, it pulled we, us out of the trees. It, it it allowed us to sit and drink and discuss ideas we wouldn't. At the same time, you know, if you want to go like full Rogan, we were eating mushrooms and shit, and and sucking on the DMT fairy back in the caveman days, and that's why we're here. See, I I uh, um, Paul Conti com compared me. He was like I was the he was like Mephisto's the Joe Rogan for AOS. And um, I think that got a certain type of person watching my show for a while there. Bot alert. Nope. I'm letting someone else do it. I'm letting... 
Ah, all right. I'm going to beat you, kicker. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. See you at work tomorrow, Travis. Bye. <laughs> all right. I beat him. Yeah. Take it easy. Um, Wings day tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you work tomorrow? Or did you take off knowing mm-hmm. better? No. No. I work tomorrow. <sighs> Rookie mistake. I thought you'd been on my show before. I mean, you started moving Rankcast to Thursdays for the holiday or for the Halloween thing. No, you they've always Friday. been Thursdays. Uh, have we not done? No, I I, I switched them to Fridays Friday. just for you, and that's where I was like, ah. "Are you sure about coming on?" Oh, I have, please, I would probably be. You know, I, I I this show's not going to break eleven o'clock, but. Hmm. We'll yeah. See. Okay. 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 I also have no no self respect or, or ability to protect myself, so <laughs> we'll see. No, I, I um. Another bot bites the dust. Bow bow. More friends. Bow. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't know. Like. I, I, yeah. So I, I was described as like the Joe Rogan, of of AOS for a little bit there, and this was before I had like a super opinion on Joe Rogan. But I, yeah, I felt Joe, Joe Rogan was just like an interview guy before he hit Spotify. He was just like interview man who talks to a couple of problematic people occasionally. Yeah. And, and he didn't have the Nazis on yet, you know, and yeah. I was just like, uh... but then I feel oh, like, like that have a Nazi on and it was more like, a, oh, we're having this guy. Who's well, we're having him on to roast him. Right. Like to make fun yeah. of him. And like yeah, that like was kind of slammed Crowder about weed and Crowder was like, no, weed's really bad. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, but then, like, but where the paychecks started coming from and, like, what the – that all became weird. Man, once it, – it's weird. Once people get paid $150 million, they uh, change. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can give me $150 million. If you like what I do, uh, capitalist, uh, you can give me $150 million. I will spend it very quickly, okay? Um, so I won't be here long, but I will hawk – whatever specific thing that you think I already appeal to does. Uh, like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe there is something. It, yeah. it just changes you. Like, that. you see it all the time. Like, and people are always shocked. Oh, Justin Bieber, he's such a good kid. You give him the keys to the candy store. Like, it just changes everybody. It, it's yeah. such a mindset of like, oh, there are no rules anymore. And here's unlimited cash for the rest of your life. Like. Imagine you don't worry about another bill ever again. I'm good. Bills don't exist to you anymore. I just play video games forever. Yeah. What are you, what are you talking about? And you have to and you have to keep producing with that. So now you have to like produce. You have to keep chucking and jiving to to keep that money coming. I I I I have a challenge to the millionaires and billionaires out there. Uh, I don't think I become a gigantic douchebag any more than I already am. Uh, with $150 million. So if you would like to prove me wrong, give me $150 million. Because I'm just going to like do a bunch of humanitarian shit with the yeah. vast majority of it, as I've proven already. How much medical debt can I buy? Yeah, how, how much medical... How many, how many people's houses can I, I pay off for them? Like, how many like kids can I send to college? And, and how much medical debt can I buy? Like and and I'm gonna do most of that, but I'm gonna throw like a really really kick ass party for like one whole year, and then I'm gonna go back right to where I was before I had 150 million dollars, because at some point having that much money is just not. It's not healthy. It's radioactive. Like two two. I, I set the cutoff at 200 million dollars. I think under 200 million dollars, you're still human. Above that, you live on a different plane of reality. Because I can fathom one million dollars. That's four of my houses. Okay. I mean, currently, and and not to get like uh, morbid or call out or something like that, but like in your lifetime of work, are you going to hit five million dollars? I don't think so. Okay, so that's five. <laughs> We're talking two hundred million after that. That's I. It's a stratosphere of rich, and it's not even like the ultra rich. No, no, they're not even the one percent at that point. Two hundred million is not even in the one percent. No, you have to get to billions before we're talking. Yeah, but two hundred million is such like an astronomical number of like. 
if you do go back to exactly where you are and spending two months of Twitch in advance, Molly might kill you. Well, that's the thing is like Molly would set up our life to be like good till I die. She would oh, like sure. budget it out for the next fifty years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, she'd be like, okay, let's put uh, forty-five million of this into the four hundred one k. So we yeah, and, and, like, and here's some low risk stocks and shit, and I'd be like, yeah, okay, but Mutual the rest fund. of it, dear, I'm just buying off a bunch of people's like debt and like I'm going to do the I will do the Santa Claus charity thing where like because we've done studies on like sort of like shotgun fortune, essentially, oh, um, yeah. and like, I'm just gonna shotgun fortune people. And just, like, turn their lives around and, like, boom, boom, boom. And, like, your life's fixed, your life's fixed. And, like, some of them will become murderers or whatever because, like, they don't have stress keeping them in line. But most of them won't be. And uh, <laughs> I'll do that and throw, like, a really sick party. I'll, like, finance a bunch of, like, indie gamers who might suck in the end. But whatever. At least I injected some money back into the economy rather than hoard it forever. You know? Like... Like, the things I would do it were I an oil baron, I wouldn't stay an oil baron for long. And I know this. I would wear a new pair of socks every single fucking day. Are, are, are you saying you wouldn't just come into uh, Mephisto's chat and Halo's chat and just drop subs? Oh, yeah. i just drop subs until I weren't allowed to anymore. <laughs> like, I, I'd find my, like, favorite, like, indie content creators. Like, I would just... Uh, uh, I like uh, uh, Neil a great deal. Uh, the liberal cuck. Uh, sorry, the liberal cook. I gave away the joke. Literal cook, like, boom, he's set forever to just keep making, like, mind-blowing content. Like, uh, Signifier, boom, set forever, just keep making content. Like, I would just, oh, he's, uh, Signifier just got a million dollar uh, 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 Patreon pledge. Yeah, no biggie. And I'm like, oh, I still have a hundred of those to go. Like, <laughs> and, But that, that's the that's a radioactivity of money. You hand Signifier a million dollars, even if you're like, hey, kid, love your content, don't change a thing. Would that fuck him up? I don't know. I if you believe that some, I mean, I, I get where you're going, and like, yes, most people it will, right? Like, because yeah. most people aren't like me, where they're just gonna like party, and like, because he certainly seems like he's. You guys share a similar quality of being like self conscious about your content, where you kind of like throw those little digs in, like, oh, the lighting, or hey, you know, this is me on camera. Like, he makes sure to put his like little humbling statement because oh. he's. By the, by the way, I don't I don't 100% agree with like the shit he says too, by the way. I just think the sh that 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 what yeah. he's saying is worthy. Yeah. To, to get oh, it's, it's a great point of view to hear and it's a point of view that I certainly don't get exposed to. Like now. like he smashed he he like even by his own admission he was like I went too hard on Bo with Bo Burnham's thing. Oh yeah, yeah. He and, he went in an interesting place that can be construed as hard. And I'm like, like I'm I, like, I don't think he like, went out there to destroy to. Bo Burnham. You had to because like Bo Burnham did what he did in like good faith and good conscience and yeah. like it, inside is still a magical work of art. Oh, it's the it's the probably the most prescient piece of media to come out of 2020. If you ask, like, me. I agree with a lot of what Signifier said and like I feel him on a lot of things. It, inside still amazing. Did not change my appreciation of Inside, and nor did he try to. He just went. A little uh, hard actually, hard yes, hard. Dinma. It is better to give a million dollars to a bunch of people who will spend it all on coke and hookers than it is to put it in another fucking investment bank, because at least the hookers make bank. Yes. Yeah, Sex I would. Workers need that cash. I would rather throw my money away at the dregs of society than I would at fucking smart investments. And it's actual, like, trickle-down economics because well, you throw a million dollars at some guy and he goes to a, a sex worker and he's like, hey, honey, that was great. Here's 10000 because fuck it. Mm -hmm. And dropping tips like crazy. Oh, I'm going to go to the grocery store. Keep By the, the way, that sex worker food. doesn't actually do more at $10,000 than she does. No. At, like Because the, 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 like, upper echelons of the amount of tips she gets for the worst she has to endure, it's already outside of, like, the human pale. So it yeah. doesn't matter to her. She just net yeah. gains money. Oh sure. So, but he he doesn't care about that. No, he he's doesn't because like, he just oh, hey, suddenly honey, has a million. He has trip. he has no comprehension of how much money a million dollars is. So he he throws a grand, ten grand at whatever. He's, he's probably never had that kind of money around. Nope. So he's he's probably also poor people tip better <laughs> than rich people do. So empirically he, correct. Uh, empirically correct. We do, especially mm -hmm. percentage wise. Because most of us have been pizza boys or waiters and shit. Yep. And, and yep. know what happens. Yep. I'll never I'm, forget that motherfucker I'm, I'm going to the drove pizzas three. to uh -oh. his house and he tipped me 63 cents and change. 
I just dropped that fucking change on his porch and turned my back. I'm like, I ain't taking your fucking coins. Get the fuck out of here. No, I, I've I've tipped every waitress. Tip your pizza boy. I've I've tipped every waitress, every every service industry person ever. Uh, there's another thing I get in trouble for Molly's. I, I tip the uh, I I tip the delivery service, and she's like, they they have a delivery charge. They get that money, and I'm like, I don't care. And I just they like, don't get that money. I know they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know they don't, and, hand, I, I, and not only not only tip them, hand them cash. Yeah, yeah. So they don't have to report it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, you pretend to, but just you know. I mean, report it to work. Yeah. 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 Obviously, report your taxes. Hey, hey, big brother, who just checked in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know the right NSA is totally taxes. watching this right now. Um, yeah. No, I, I mean, like. Like I, there's that part of me that like I would love to win the lottery, and I would I would take the uh, big true from uh, your boy BWG. What's it called? You can take it against escrow or something. Not escrow. It's it's called something where like you can take it, you can get the lump sum, and I would actually oh, take the oh, lump yeah, sum yeah. and and pay oh, all well, the taxes on it. Take take the lump sum a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Never I'll take the that. payout. You're not gonna live that long. Nope. Like I'll take the lump sum because I'm just again I'm gonna throw the raddest party for like about three years and go back to living my life. <laughs> five five million today is worth more than ten million over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take the five. If you're gonna win, you know, you hit Mega Ball, you get three hundred million dollars, and it's like, oh well, lump sum payment, we can give you like a hundred and twenty five. Take the check. A hundred percent of the time. Yep, I'll pay the taxes on that. And by the way, you can invest it way better and like just make money. Yeah, like yeah. Oh, I spent half on taxes, so I only have a hundred and twenty-five million dollars. Okay. Oh no, yeah, that's more than I'd have made in my entire lifetime anyway. Yeah, the entire lineage of my family would never make that amount of money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'll take oh, it. No, it's the worst thing ever. No. Um, you just go to random games workshops and find that twelve-year-old boy and go here, kid. Oh, here's here's a two-thousand-point army. Have an army, kid. Yeah. No, I would. Gaming saved my life. It it did. It, it I mentioned the. It's easier to tell people I'm an orphan than what I actually was, which is a person who who fell between the cracks of society. Um, well, I'm sure most days you feel like you wish you were. Orphans have be more easier, support. <laughs> yeah, you'd have an easier way to to justify the things that have happened to you through life. It was just like, oh yeah, it was like James and the Giant Peach, and the fucking rhino came out of the sky and killed my parents and. Yeah. That's why all this fucked up shit happened. Oh, damn like, it. Is that why I love that? Story. I love the book, but I love the movie so much more. The fucking animated movie is the shit. And they make oh, peach, yeah, the... like, with the fucking drinks when they're drinking the peach, like, fucking root beer floats. They make it look so good. Welcome Nothing has ever looked as tasty to me in podcast. my life as the, like, the fucking, like, frothy beverages they're clanking together that they make out of the peach. Yeah, the Brooklyn Caterpillar guy. Yeah. 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 My 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 almost four year old daughter is all about Nightmare Before Christmas, and now that's Halloween, she's into it. And I was like, oh, yeah, sorry, kid, I already fucked you up. <laughs> Maybe your sister will turn out okay. Hot Topic's gonna gonna love you soon. Is Hot Topic still around? It's a true question. Is Hot Topic still around? <laughs> Can get someone from chat confirm. Yeah, if Hot Topic exists, I'm sure Spencer's I, Gifts I, has always owned them. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It, do, does Spencer's Gifts exist? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, dude, uh, he, he cut me deep. So we went down to Milwaukee with the express purpose of shopping uh, last weekend because oh, we weird. needed we, we needed some costume stuff. Hang on. All right, checking. You ready? You ready for this? You're not ready for this. I'm ready for this. Oh, I just got DMCA'd. Shit. Oh, hey, there it is. How's it going? You just watched Rantcast, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? That's true, Hades. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet it is all just like 
e-girl, that weird mumble rapper fashion. Yeah. All right, there we go. Yeah, I, Hades brought up a good point. Hot Topic exists for e-girls and TikTokers at this point. Oh, good, fine. Get, get that yeah, dosh. So, yeah, get the dosh. Keep selling your Metallica t-shirts. Rock yeah. and roll, baby. Yeah, no, so we, we, we went down and um, uh, looking for costumes, and we didn't find, like, you don't find costumes at Spirit. You find inspiration at Spirit, okay? Correct. Unless you want to buy a $15 piece of shit. You find the inspiration at Spirit. Yeah, you you find the inspiration at Spirit. I love. Don't get me wrong. I like. I I still buy stuff at Spirit because I want them to keep doing what they fucking do. Sure. Like, I want them to like keep taking up like old shopcos and payless and just like the utter edifices of old consumerism for like change on the dollar to sell a bunch of overpriced plastic and latex. Like, keep doing that. Keep keep doing that. But yeah, so we, we went and we bounced around, but we ended up in a, in, in a section of town where uh, the Barnes & Noble I used to manage was gone. It's not there anymore. It's being turned into a bank right now. Like, we driving past it and seeing this old, like, like retail space that is a fully retail with a literal fucking Starbucks drive through on it being turned into a bank was, like, fucking disembodied, like, craziness. And we, we so we drove through this, like, whole area and, like... Hey, that's the the place we went and like got like Krispy Kreme in the like the Super AM because you can watch the Krispy Kreme donuts come out the conveyor line and they flip them and they turn them into the Krispy Kremes and we went and got Krispy Kreme and and uh, and we were going through like this sort of like re- like rehash of our memories and I was just getting super depressed at how much everything was not the way it was. Yeah, and just looking at all these skeletons of. Like, everything, like, there was just, it, it wasn't that, like, it turned into something else, it was just, it was empty now. Yeah, it was just dead. Like, everything was gone, like, the GameStop and, and the place we got our the, phones. The mound, and... the mound of flowers had not grown over the corpse yet, it was just a corpse. Yeah, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, and that's, that's the bonus, like, if I can suggest anybody who's in their young 20s, move away. Leave your home and never come back. I lived in, I grew up completely in Houston, moved to Lubbock for college, and then moved to San Antonio. I don't go to Houston for any fucking reason. Fuck Houston. So I don't have the like, oh, look, there's my, uh, I never run into that. San Antonio is the place I live now. Like, oh, I can say, oh, that kind of changed from five years ago. Oh, that's interesting. Like, I have no childhood memories from this place, except my, like, grandparents' house. Move, move away. Don't stay where you, your family's always been. Expand your gene pool. Move elsewhere. I mean, fifty dollars for me to look like a voluptuous cat girl with a bulge and a beard. Uh, based. 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 Cat cat boys are in like Flynn right Dude, now. Dude, like, could you? There was like a thing that came out, and they're like, cat boy. Like, if you do this, and you have cat boys, and and that thing, and they were like, they said it like it was a negative, and I'm like. Oh, I mean, it's like the people were like, uh, Squid Games is actually about communism, am I right? And I'm like, <laughs> who are you writing this for? <laughs> well, that's just proof that you can never be too overt with your metaphor, ever. No shit. Like, hey, kill yourself to be rich. And it's like, communism. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah, well, sure. Com- you did well, it, pal. Like, well, that's just the, like, as a writer, I get worried. That, is this too on the nose? Was I too... It can uh, never be. It can never be, apparently. It can never... The most overt tree type... Uh, like, the most overt takedown of capitalism we've had in modern media. Uh, and they're just like, it's about communism's bad. I'm like... I mean, that or, like... Y- you gotta know that, first and foremost, economists are cheerleaders for capitalism. And yes. our news media are cheerleaders for capitalism. Yes, and they're owned by mega corporations. <laughs> and and so like these are like two things people need to know about. So when people are like the mainstream media, it's just what flavor of pro capitalism do you want? The pro capitalism that's like pretend. Yeah, do you to... want a fear? You want a low key racist fear monger, or do you want to low key virtue signal? Right. Which one, Which do, one, you one do you want? Do you want the virtual? Neither signal? are going to say anything different. Yeah, they're both still like fucking like raw raw capitalism. 
like in America, like like what? The yeah, heck? one's gonna say, "Oh, those Black Lives Matter riots are bad because of the black people," and the other one's gonna be like, uh, "Hey, everybody, go to these go to these centers where impoverished people live and burn their houses down to to protest the man." It's like, yeah, neither CNN one is helping this community. That, but... No, CNN <laughs> actually like. We're just like, oh, Target got burnt. That was bad. You had a good yeah, message. Yeah, oh, so save why the Target. Don't it? worry about all these businesses they smashed. Yeah, yeah, why would you? And not, not the Black Lives Matter movement. All you yuppie kids who came in from the suburbs and blew up these local shops. Thanks, kids. Helping the cause. <sighs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, and then everyone getting what communism. Even in their own, like, takedowns of, like, Squid Games, where, where they got Squid Games wrong, and they're like, it's about communism, and you're like, and, and and you're just like you don't know. First off, you're wrong about communism. Second off, you're wrong about socialism because you keep using the terms interchangeably, just like they do gender and sex. It's almost like you want to make false equivalencies to dilute the conversation down to like a bunch of misinformation. Like, I know you know the difference because I knew the difference at a high school level, having read two fucking books. Yeah. It, the the thing with like at least my my new my new lifestyle with with sex and gendering is just like just don't assume you're anything and and to just live like i've only had sex with women so i guess i'm straight I, uh, I haven't been proven otherwise so i guess i'll deal with that label well that that's where like i I'm, I'm fairly certain that i'm i'm pan or demisexual just cuz sure. I'm, I'm like super but like i've I'm like in a like a hyper committed relationship now. Yeah, where like I, I enjoy where I'm at now, so I have no interest in exploring any of that shit. And, and I'm like, no. if if I said any of that shit, it would at it would be disingenuous or perceived as disingenuous as just somebody like trying to like get some like undue clout to himself. Yeah, it, it would be like, hey guys, uh, I'm I'm Polly now. Come watch my shit. Yeah, it's like, and so I'm like, I don't see any value in in doing that yeah. or being that because it's never. I've struggled with some shit young, but I don't like. I'm not currently struggling with anything, and like, so I don't see the value in doing that personally, because the detractors or, or the the people that could say I'm doing it in a good faith versus bad faith, like I just I'd rather not invite that. Yeah. And so I'm just like I just hand wave over it. And I'm like, but like you're damn right. Our our NB fucking overlord just showed up in Warhammer, you know, like with a uh, with a uh, uh, Anasta. Like that's right. That's our fucking. Uh, that's our fucking NB yeah. NB vampire. Like conqueror. Let like let's go. Yeah, like that meme that popped up where they're like, "Oh, are you a boy or a girl vampire?" And it's like, "I'm a vampire." Or, I, like, I what are a you a vampire? Yeah, yeah, but how do you identify? Like, yeah, and then like, what's in, yeah, but what's in your pants, bats? Like, yeah. perfect, a Live. perfect like assessment of the current like uh, gender dialogues going on right now. And like, Dinma's been doing it wrong. You need to do communism naked too. That's that's how communism works. Uh, look at this way. Uh, do what you want, leave others alone, and take chances to enjoy new things. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. The difference yeah. between communism and sex. For one of them, you are naked. Uh. You, need to, you need to do both naked. If if politics were done naked, there would be uh, the conversations would at least be shorter because everyone's cold. <laughs> You misunderstood, SJ. Sex requires special clothing and a safe word. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I certainly require a t-shirt because I'm ashamed of my body. Like, even Ron, Ron White, the uh, blue-collar comedy tour, had a bit there where uh, he he basically like lures somebody into, like, confronting their uh, misconceptions about yeah, sexuality. Uh, yeah, his cousin where he talks about the, the yeah. big throbbing cock. Yeah, thing. he's yeah. like, yeah, so do you like, when when... When a when you're watching porn, do you like a guy with like a little flaccid, weak penis? He's like, no, I like big hard cock. And yeah. it's like, yeah, you do. <laughs> you know, like, 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 it, it, like even the conceptions about uh, about like, yeah, I need to work out again. I can't think about this now. I'm not gay. That that's another yeah. bit, right? Like it, 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 I, like, I don't know, like. It's just like what we were talking about near the beginning of the show about religion. I, I've got something I like figured out now. Yeah. 
I, I don't know anything about my sexuality otherwise. Yeah. So uh, like I, I, said, I like what I got now. I'm just going to stick to it. And whatever anybody wants to do, cool. Well, and that's the other thing is, like, why are people so obsessed with what other people are doing? Why is it? It's like the only reason you'd be obsessed with it is if there's some sort of like insecurity on your part, you know, where you need some yeah, sort. People of... are so interested in other people's fucking business. I, I don't. Never... I don't care. Who cares? Don't care. Like, and this is the thing I avoided earlier, which is Dave Chappelle and yada yada yada. And this is what there, we're going to go out no on. There's no good way to this, talk about any of that th shit. Th this is what we're, we're going to go out on. This is it. Um, Dave Chappelle had some good jokes in there. I'm, I'm going to say it right now. He had some great jokes in there. Um, he also he said trans joke. women are women, which immediately undermined the follow-up thing that I think is the most contentious by saying he's team turf. Because if he's team turf, which is team hate movement, right? that doesn't believe trans women are women. That's the whole turf agenda. They don't believe. So he's not that. And I don't know where the punchline was going from there. But like, the thing that bothers me is complaining about canceling in the whole thing. Yeah, I mean that's that's just where comedians are now, and like he's stuck in the loop of can't can't escape the I, oh I have to talk about how much people hate me for an I, hour. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, if no, you're gonna nobody, be edge lord comedy, be edge lord comedy. I love me some edgy jokes. The edgy jokes I don't do, but I fucking love I, I love that like. The um, Bill it opens Burr. discussion when done in a in a good way. It opens discussion when it's done in the shit troll four chan way. Then it's just hateful. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah right. And that's it's the a, thing is it's that, a thin line, right? And who are you subverting? Yeah, like if if you're going for subversive humor, who are you subverting? Are you subverting the patriarchy? Are you subverting trans people who have all their privilege that needs to be subverted right now? Mm, like I don't know. But like I, I actually like I'm a I'm a big Dave Chappelle stan. I stand him the last time he did a bunch of like misogyny stuff, and then yeah, he I, was think, like, I think I think it's up up to this point he had more interesting commentary, and then this one just became kind of like his boomer. Podcast. Well, it was a it was just a bunch of boomer like hacky humor. Yeah, he had some yeah. good jokes in there. He really did, and and, and, and and he certainly had a point of like, hey, in the end of the day, you get to play white in front of the cops, and I don't. And I was like, you're not wrong. You're certainly not wrong, but but he also omitted the fact that like, like black people, other people of color, are trans and queer. Yeah, and of course he 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 found the uh, the example of the the what was it, Jefferson riots or what what. What's the one that he brought up in there? It's just one of those, like, he's just got to move on. And I'm glad that he, I think the point of the show was like, hey, guess what? I have to talk about this because I'm just never going to be able to not. And I'm going to take a break. And maybe that means he comes back in a couple of years and he's refreshed. Because he's stuck in the rut where comedians like, oh, I traveled for the last four years. So all my jokes are about airports. He's been stuck in this cancel culture loop for so long. All his jokes are about this Stop. shit, and nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, I could give a fuck about us. Uh, like when I I got about halfway through watching it, and I was like, oh yeah, the Tyson Fury fight's on. I I can't watch this anymore. I I don't care about your complaints, Dave. The last couple specials were really fun and really energetic, and like nobody. Oh, his, his COVID like one anymore. was great, where he had like the open audience and the COVID, and then he yeah. did a and he, like, did, he did a David Lever Letterman spot on David Letterman's Netflix show. That was great. Like, um, yeah, BWG with the correct take. All these canceled people, I still seem to hear a lot from, for being fucking canceled. Yeah, the only person who was actually canceled was like, uh, who who was that that cooking chick, who had the weird white parties, and was dropping. No, she got picked up by History Network or whatever the fuck. Oh, is she on History now? Yeah, she was on History Channel doing like some other thing. Then she had uh, to my only gears. other example will be Roseanne Barr. Yeah, she's already planning her next comeback. I assure you. Paula Dean came back. Yeah, Paula Dean oh, came. Paula back. Dean. That's yeah, right. Paula Dean came Nancy back. Grace, but that's another wacky white chick. No, like you, you like. If you're a minority, your chances of being canceled increase as far as, like, you know, because if you're, like, white men of enough money, just, they don't get canceled. They get held to some form no, of scrutiny. No. Like, I, I don't know. 
Yeah, like, find, find me a solid, this guy was ruined, and not from, like, a criminal sin. Jared Fogle, the fucking subway guy, was raping kids. Yeah, of course, of course he got canceled and put in jail. Like, find me the guy who said the wrong thing and is now, like, officially out. Yeah, they lost money for doing it. Last thing I remember yeah, I about mean, David Letterman uh, is him having I, I guess you could kind of say Milo because no one's paying him to do dick right now. That's not true. Milo's on to come back, too. His whole thing is, like, he's been conversion therapy. He was a success. Oh, God. That's so cringe. <laughs> oh, chucking and jiving for the sis. That's disgusting. Yeah, his whole thing is, like, is like conversion therapy worked on him, and he's about to get married to, to somebody. Um, it, it, and actually, Hotspur has a good point with Roseanne's descent being sad because Roseanne Barr is secretly like on a level with Chris Benoit where she had a traumatic accident young in life where she's a damaged human. Like, we need to take everything Roseanne Barr says with a grain of salt because she was put in the hospital for like a year following getting hit by a fucking car. So, like, she's fucked up, and she's old, and she's on drugs. Like, give Roseanne, like, a little bit of, like, okay, honey, well, and, and, don't throw all the money in the world at her, and you can do whatever you want with your money. But, like, well, don't be mad at Roseanne. She's fucked up. Well, and, and there is there is something to be said for, like, that, that, that old guard of, like, I expect a certain degree of, like, uh, shit from people. Like, my grandpa. I, I love my grandpa to death. Uh, phrasing, he's dead now. Um, but he's a Vietnam-era sailor. What do you expect him to think yeah. of certain conversations? And, like, am I going to move over my, my, my grandpa who, like, drove evac skivs out of the swamp, uh, like, when the issues of, like, policies with china and stuff come up where i'm like lefties need to be harsher on china and like i'm trying to like have some nuanced opinions and sh do i expect him to do anything other than slur and say like how where's my uh, i mean yeah i know uh uh cry me a river my great plight of not wanting to hate my grandpa and stuff because i come from uh enough privilege um but like there's just i don't know yeah it's like my family's going in and, and it happens every time one of these gimmicks happen, but with like John Gruden's emails where it's like, Oh, it's 10 years ago. Why is he getting fired from his job now? And I was like, this is, this is going to happen to all of us one day. And I was like, well, I hope you're not emailing this kind of shit to each other. Cause wow. Uh, but two, he's got a public job. He's got a public relations job in a, and NFL is the biggest fucking company in entertainment in America. Like, they can't have that. They have to say but, bye. That's so, the agreement you signed up for was you have to be morally perfect or morally perfect enough to let the in NFL the public lens. get on. In the yeah. public lens, yeah. So you're in the public light. Sorry. You you can go back and read some of my early uh, 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 reviews of games. I am not as woke as i am now like i i say bitch a lot more sure I, like i you know like i i have some problematic language back then i've i've never been one of those guys who used like gay as a slur though like uh, yeah I, I will out myself as i was a texas football player in the early 2000s i used lots of gay slurs well like it was the... it was the style at the time well like or like uh, that's gay, like because yeah, I was the victim of that what, one. Like, a lot of I that had... calling people the f word stuff. Like yeah, that happened a lot. Yeah, like, so and I didn't I like do not any longer because I'm I am like, an adult now. But like I I didn't do that one, but I had a lot of like misogynistic language and mm -hmm. like I my 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 crimes are there in, in a PR sense, and and you can read them and stuff like that. And you I, I go back and I read this shit. And I'm like ah gross. I'm like, and that's where I come back to like Mike Tyson is like, where's that threshold for letting people suck, but yeah. try to be better? Like, what's the what's the time period on how much they suck and and stuff? And I, I think it comes down to actions versus words, right? Like, sure. I mean, you just have to see that genuine face turn. Yeah, somebody's like, the face Tyson turn. Tyson like, is such a genuine face turn. Like Bill Cosby coming back and doing comedy does nothing for me. <laughs> like, where's the face turn? He's just still the rapist who got away with it. Like, oh, he's got some jokes now. Sweet. 
Like, Tyson goes out of his way to go, like, yeah, the person I was was such a disaster, and, like, I work every day to make sure I'm not this disaster again, and I'm scared of my former self. And, like, you can see this genuine panic and pain in his voice when he talks. It's like, yeah, that's a face turn. Although I am interested in uh, what Haiti said. Did they did they get rid of the voice of Brawley at some point? Did I miss that? I'm I'm not I'm not very plugged into Funimation. Are you familiar with that story? No. I'm looking it up now. A local politician was posted him doing Nazi singer songwriter sessions. Very upset when he was forced to resign as what he did in his spare time. And oh yeah, that old chestnut. Yeah, I was like ah, you know. I just collect Nazi memorabilia and dress up with it when I have sex. I'm not a Nazi. Don't worry about me, pal. I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. Sure. I'm sure he's got money currently. Um, like, I'm sure that he'll he'll be invited on some, like, random, like, righty con at some point to complain about his Oh, shit. yeah. I'm, I'm sure any of these guys who do anime, you, you could do con circuit pretty easy. I mean, yeah. that's... Well, like, I'm sure you can go see Mark Marrow and shake his fucking hand. Fuck that guy. Well, and that, uh, uh, Jared, what you're saying, Cannibal, people need to be able to grow. I, I mean, there's, this is the thing I'm I'm currently, uh, I don't want to say struggling with because I'm, I'm not struggling with it. Like, like where's my, th my threshold for this? To yeah. let people grow versus, like, hold them accountable for their shit. And, yeah, um, like, right, right now, is Michael Vick a piece of shit? No. A lot of people don't feel that way. Like, you ask me, he went to jail. He lost everything. And then he worked as hard as he could to come back. And he tried to make right, and he talks about what he does in the past with some remorse. That's a face turn. <laughs> he got punished. Uh, I'm also, you know, I'm one of those horrific liberals who's like, I, I could easily put maximum uh, prison sentences on people. I don't believe in life in prison. I think that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, f fifteen years. Fifteen years is so fucking long. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, I was sixteen. That's like a ten lifetimes ago. Yeah. I can't imagine spending that entire time in prison and like, oh, I I killed a guy when I was fifteen and I'm up for parole at thirty five. That's like your entire fucking life, dog. <laughs> you just missed it. That's enough fucking punishment. Well, is the, uh, I'll never understand. I think Hotspur jumping in here for a second, like, I, I think that's, I think this is kind of prescient. Drew Maggery wrote a good piece about his early writing and the Kissing Susie Colbert uh, website and how he learned and grew. Well, I, I think there's got to be some good faith effort on the person who sucks, right? Because we all suck. If if they're going to rejoin public life, if they just want to fuck off, fine. If you fuck off, then fine, fuck off. Like, yeah. Disappear. If you're going to try to be in public life and speak to people, and certainly if you speak about your previous issues, you got to do it. You have to do it in the in the right way. But please feel free to just fuck off. No, my my, my sister Mariah is a women's studies major. I was English lit, and then Katie, who a uh, 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 goose. Y'all know her in Discord. Um, she's in. She's been in all my uh, all my like RPG campaigns for a while now, and I've said some like really stupid misogynistic shit to her. Like I, I uh, like I was one of those people who like actually criticized the Ghostbusters reboot to her. And um, I mean, it, it's not like it was good. No, it wasn't good. But like I didn't need to have that criticism because no. there's a lot of bad boy stuff too. Does sure. That, does that like, make yeah, sense? Yeah. Like, dude, dude, where we're not going to talk about dude, where's my car? But well, like, why, why didn't I go out of my way to shit on a bunch of Transformers sequels? But yeah. like, I had to talk about how bad Ghostbusters was. Yeah. You know, like what? Yeah, it, what, could just, what it could just be like Cowboy Bebop remake. It's like it's just not for me. Right. And it, it, me. Yeah. And and that was something I came to later on. But like, Katie didn't just like, yo, you fucking suck. Quit being a misogynist pig. She like. She, like, heard me out. And Molly, Molly too, by the way. Like, and they're just like, yo, sus? And I was just like, maybe sus, but I'm going to keep talking for a while. And then I did. And then, and then like, they let me process how I was being scummy in, like, a space where, like, there was someone like, 
that that threw the flag, like in football. You know, and yeah. I'm like penalty, being too much of a shit. But like they didn't like forfeit me the game. You know, like yeah. it was the yellow card, not the red card. In to use soccer that nobody watches. Like and and not to mansplain mansplaining. It's so hard not to mansplain. It yeah. just happens. You just start doing it. You're like, fuck, I'm two-thirds of the way into a mansplain right now. This is – how do I stop myself from mansplaining? Well, or let it, alone I'm a the, guy whose podcast is called Rantcast. Do you think this isn't how I talk to everybody in the world? Mm-hmm. And then when, like, somebody is just, like, you're mansplaining to me right right now, and I'm like, you don't understand. I mansplain to everyone. And they're like, yeah, but it's not right right now. And, like, I don't get the nuance or the, you know – like if no. I mansplain to men, it's a little bit different. If I mansplain to women, and like, like, because if you're mansplaining to people of a privileged position uh, with power and so on and so forth, then it's just part of the normal discourse. This is why "dude" is not gender neutral term. As much as I say "dude" and "man," do you fuck no. dudes? Real quick, "dude" is yeah. gender neutral. When you're like talking to your bro, are you like, "Yeah," and then I fuck this dude? You don't, yeah. do you? You don't say that, do you? So it's not gender neutral. It's 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 gender acceptable in the neutral mm-hmm. discourse. Big difference. Like not it's gender neutral. Um, it's just acceptable because of the the normal constraints for conversation. And I'm not gonna like lambast people and woke scold people for saying dude or man too much because I do it way too much. But again, it's not the fucking same, and uh, we just need people to come around to that eventually. And, and I, I will say, not to make this up, because I don't want it to be, Ghost, Ghostbusters 2016, the podcast, it was not about favoring the agenda. Ghostbusters 1 was this weird, happy accident Perfect. between yeah, three Lightning in a bottle. Lightning in a bottle. The same original crew and out. cast couldn't recapture its success. No. And, and it was a perfect amount, like, it was all about dry, deadpan humor to it. perfection. And the, the the new one was like, let's take a bunch of people who did episodes of the community and office and write Ghostbusters. It was never going to work. And the message, the message was tacked on to something that was already bad. So, that's me. I watch soccer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We call it, we call egg ball football here, Hades. As you call it, uh, Australian rules football as well. Although I'm pretty sure they use their feet slightly more. I mean, not these days. Goddamn. Every fucking play is a field goal these days in football. Am I right? They don't even play real football anymore. Didn't I say I was going to cut this podcast off at 11 o'clock? <laughs> Oops. What mini is to my right? Are you talking about Ghost with the Most here? This fella? This is my Morn Ghoul proxy that is from Etsy. And he is the shit. He's so much cooler than the Forge World one, and he'll cost you about $35 on Etsy. And he's a pretty much perfect print. He's well off the base, so he can stack in. So if you're like me, and you're desperate to find a way to make Night Haunt fun, because they're fucking trash right now, put a Morn in. And this guy is not a bloodthirster. This is Scarbarand. Yeah. Scarbarand. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Come on. Have some respect. Throw some respect on his name. Respect on his name. Respect. All right. So I wasn't the one that like went totally off the rocker tonight. So I'm happy about that. Hey, D6 showing up. How's it going? <laughs> I, I can't quite say Decancast 3 had much of a rocker to start on. <laughs> no, we had no. We, we had no, no like even pretense because usually there's like a, a pretense for the show. Be bright. Decancast 4 will have a pretense. No, it won't. You're you're lying. It's just gonna. No, be we already we already made it in Discord. It's gonna be all about cocktails, and it'll be to can't cast for cock meta, and it'll be perfect. I like that. And we're gonna have the the big four, you know, your four horsemen of the apocalypse: whiskey, 
uh, vodka, tequila, gin, and we're going to make a nice cocktail I out of each one. Gin. I can't do gin. Remember when you hated Chardonnay? <sighs> I can't do gin. Why are, you, why are you trying to hurt me? <laughs> you came into that podcast going Chardonnay is shit. Grandmas drink Chardonnay, and you're like, well, 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 maybe I drink Chardonnay now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you're going to sell me on a gin that I can ap appreciate. I, I just kind of want to reset this last segment of the conversation to send us off on. Sure. I think it's important to have a safe s space. Uh, I know I'm saying it. Now. Do you look, look at how much look at how much the right ain't talking about safe spaces and um, and uh, 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 what was the other one? Uh, trigger warnings. Look at how much yeah. all these random culture war shit that the right just brings up out of nowhere and they just drop it. Uh, do, you, do you need your safe space, cis white male? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't just like talk about that anymore. Like they don't care. I I do think uh, 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 cis hat white men need safe spaces because they I think need what, them a lot because oh, they got nowhere. Well, <laughs> they I mean the social each other. <laughs> the the social the the social network for like boring ass white men is very thin. Because you live in a toxic, masculine, uh, advantaged society towards your favor. Uh, so, like, oh, tell me about your problems, the guy with yep. the most advantages possible. Like, yep. tell me about your problems. And, like, and then, like, and then, again, your your problems on, like, a galactic scale maybe don't matter. But on a personal scale, like, yeah, it kind of sucks. And so, like, you have somebody like a Jordan Peterson tell you, like, not only do your problems suck the most ever they've ever sucked, but also it's everybody else's problems. Yeah. You're just not quite angry and you don't dress well enough. <laughs> yeah, like, you're not mad enough and you're not, like, angry with Islam enough. And, like, and then you get all this fucking toxic, horrible yeah. garbage. Here, here, here's the big problem. Just starting point. What's the percentage of uh, American males over 15 who do not feel safe to cry in front of another human? Yeah. That's an unacceptable percentage. Or, or, or the only emotion you're allowed to experience outwardly as a, as a man is anger. Yep. That that's kind of fucked. And and again, like I don't want to make this an if then or a, a weighted equation in in any manner because so many people suffer so much worse than you or I or anybody else ever will. But like you're on a just living your your truth. That's it. And on a on a personal level, like you gotta have some fucking safe spaces. You gotta have some stuff to go and experience and like get this shit out, so that you can like process the other bigger stuff. And and yeah, Hulk no cry at sad movies. Hulk smash instead. Like the only movie any man was allowed to cry at was Gladiator because he was too too manly. Yeah, to... yeah. The, the man with the sacrifice is the only thing you can cry. About. Yeah, you, you can. Cry. Yeah, yeah. And and for a while, sports ball was the only place you could experience all of the emotions. Yep. You could you could be happy, excited, violent, blah blah. And, and then then you have a moment of genuine sadness in something that you're not prepared for, and then you're just left to figure it the fuck out, and no one feels sorry for you. So and it's it's fucked. So so I'm gonna be explicit here. Uh, Nazis, fuck off. My show's not for you. Fascists, fuck off. My show's not for you. Like I'm I I don't care that you think you need your fucking ethno state fuck off that's not what i'm saying when i say safe, safe space i'm being explicit yeah but but there is a place out there for the disaffected white male and the disaffected black male and other people of color that need to like n not choke down all that fucking patriarchy and 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 experience some camaraderie and have some bridges built out into the LGBTQ and the NB community and you need to be able to like I don't know have a safe space and we're, we're the closest we've ever been to escaping toxic masculinity and we're still a long way away right right and and so uh, you know I, I see you you know don't 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 like I don't know 
uh, uh, the you, suicide you, get, you have on... a male friend in your life that you play this this stupid miniature games with. Tell him you love him. Yeah, because you do. Yeah, yeah. Get you some platonic male love is I guess yeah. what I'm saying. And like, you don't need to be afraid of being the gay because you like because you can be gay and that's awesome. By the way, like be gay, do crime. Seriously, it, try it out yeah. sometime. Um, but also just, but also just like have some platonic love and um don't i don't know just 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 don't be ashamed. don't go too long without a good hug right right and and have yourself a good cry if you need it and uh, drink yourself some wine and and uh broaden your horizons do not drink to alleviate your emotions no hug that's different no no don't bottle your emotions and like alcohol Yana says hug yeah just yeah but like i don't know Get you some platonic love in your life. Find yourself a safe space to process your your more toxic or, or bad emotions because they're all in in there. And uh, I, I wish I was more eloquent here. I wish I could like yeah, I, like if you if if I told you your homework assignment is pick a friend in your Discord or your Facebook or your whatever that you like see IRL a lot. Like they're they're your in real life friends and. Just send him a note of like, hey man, like, I appreciate our relationship a lot, and like, thank thanks for being my friend. If you feel uncomfortable doing that, you are a victim of toxic masculinity. You should be able to tell your friend you appreciate them. <laughs> that is not gay, <laughs> or gay in like the the yeah. toxic masculine. Like, you're not a man. Tell your friend, thank you for being my friend. Mister Rogers got your back, dog. Thank you for being my friend. You are the one. You are special. You are my friend. You are special to me. That is yeah. what Mr. Rogers taught us. Remember, Fred. Yeah. Well, Mr. Rogers washed a black man's feet on live television. Once. As like the ultimate fuck you, Mr. Yeah. Rogers. Didn't he? Shit. Yeah. Like that was super gangsta. And so like, like uh, be less insecure. Be open to, to. Yeah, and Steve. Oh, Steve, he still cut me deep. Steve with Steve, the like, Steve oh, with the based Steve. return. Like he just off the top it. rope. It was the like the sky yeah. elbow out of nowhere. Hey, look at you. I'm so proud. Oh, I just I but didn't know. Uh, but th but that's the thing is like it's like um it it is about ultimately camaraderie and 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 community and stuff like that and you just need to build bridges between everybody Maybe talk to people meet people that are outside your your comfort group and go into it without agendas and insecurity and i know that last part's hard because insecurity kind of like drives us in a like horrible weird way um yeah yeah Hot hotspur is going to take my other homework assignment of you know after this show ends in a couple minutes here like think just be quiet don't turn on the next podcast or youtube video whatever Think for a minute about the people that got you to this happy place. If you if you feel like you're in a happy place or whoever brings you joy in your life and and continuously does, think about them and then like let them know that. That's important to them too, to go like, oh, I make that person happy. I can be a little happier today knowing that I make that person happy. Like that gift you give people of gratefulness is so important to the entire chain yeah. and uh watch fucking golden girls yeah yeah That's golden definitely... girls is based super based yeah, um, b arthur not fucking around yeah b arthur not fucking around um no uh internet hug to all you weirdos too um you know uh, broaden your horizons meet new people um and just... remember these new new people they don't know who you are they don't know your past. They don't know all your embarrassing stories. They don't know your little whatevers. You get to be whoever you want to these new people. Be you. Be the yeah. you that you want to sell. Yeah. Don't 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 think about oh I better what. They don't know dick about who you are. Just start living your new life that second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Live that live that shit. And uh, again, take care of yourself. Be excellent to each other. That is. Please. Come like, back for Decant Cast Four. I expect to see all of you. Oh, apparently that's the thing. We're gonna we're gonna do that and watch the fucking Golden Girls. 
<laughs> Golden Girl cast win is the question the watch, people want to know. Watch some anime, get yourself some positive, uh, you know, like relationships in your life, and and look for that platonic love, uh, and you know, I don't know. I, the only sign off I I've ever had is drink your milk, pay your taxes, but most importantly, be excellent to yourselves and each other. Everybody, seriously, like the world's big, and there's a lot of sweet, sweet people out there, and you you should you should meet them and do it from a place of lack of judgment and impa- passion. It's always been about passion. That's what Rantcast has always been about. Passion, compassion. Find those two things. That's it. That's it. That's the message. Take care, everybody. I'll see you later. You're going to carry that